Oh. Hello, everybody. I hope I hope you guys can hear me. If you guys can hear me and see me, if you can't hear or see, make sure you let me know in the chat. And I will pick up on that. Okay. It says so happy Friday, everybody. See, we got 19 folks, and I'm sure it's gonna climb up. So what are we gonna be talking about this Friday? I am going to be talking to you guys about stabilizers, okay? So uh, I'm a little out of breath because I ran up here. So as you can see, a little disorganized a little bit. Um, the last two uh, Fridays, I was in Florida because um, me and my sister, our father is, is ill. So um, he is right now fighting leukemia and he is still hospitalized. We were hoping to have him home by this week, but um, it didn't work out that way. He's still there. So um, yeah, so our family is going through a little challenging time right now, but we're gonna be fine. Um, we always uh, pull through and stuff. So um, yeah, but I do wanna say thank you to everybody that have reached out to me and people were even reaching out to me when I was traveling to Florida and also um, traveling back home. And I really do appreciate that because, you know, it, it's, uh, it's it's been a trying time. So anyway, but enough about me and what's going on. Um, Mello is, I think Mello went to go lie down with daddy. I don't know. But anyway, but let's talk about today's topic, okay? Um, you know, we're talking about stabilizers today. Now, a lot of times you see a lot of people, they talk about the machines, they talk about the different threads, and sometimes they even talk about the product, like certain things that we're going to embroider and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, sometimes people really forget about the stabilizer. It's like the last thing they think about when they're doing machine embroidery. When if you really think about it, it's kind of like one of really the first things that you should be thinking about once you have your product and you know exactly what you're going to embroider, right? Because a lot of times, depending on what you're doing, that's going to determine the type of stabilizer that you're going to use. So I kind of figured, let me go down the list of the stabilizers that I happen to have here. And I figured I will go through my stash and I will show you guys what I use, what I use it for, and um, how I use it, okay? Because I thought this would probably be very, very helpful. Also, if you look in the chat, okay, in the very beginning of the chat, I put a link of an article that I found on embroiderylibrary.com regarding machine embroidery stabilizer. I thought that article was really, really good. It kind of broke down the different types of stabilizers. And if you look at the bottom of that article, it even has a chart, okay? And the chart kind of lists the type of stabilizers you should use for what product and what design, okay? So I thought this was a really handy article. So I wanted to share that with you guys because, you know, it's really... Um, First of all, I love sharing information and, you know, it's like, you know, I don't want you guys to ever think like I know everything. I don't know everything. Okay. Um, I make mistakes too. And I, I still embroider and I still screw up. I screwed up a, a towel today and stuff. So anyway, but let's talk about stabilizers. Okay. Because just like um, I try to share information with you guys, I still also learn and all that kind of stuff. And I've always believed there's more than one way to do things. Okay. So I got the list of stabilizers in front of me on my iPad. So I'm going to go down them one by one and I'm going to show you what I use and for what. Okay. And stuff. So let, let me, um, I'm going to move this out of the way because I got my little, this is kind of like where I put most of my stabilizer. Okay. It's usually like right in here. So I'm just going to grab stuff out of here and let's just talk about it. And then at the same time, I could put everything in the back nice and neat. Sometimes it does get a little messy. All right, so I got this big roll here. Okay, now what is this roll? Kind of like slam this down. Like, ugh. All right, so this is tearaway stabilizer. All right, and it's kind of very, very papery. Um, and I have to tell you, this is what I use for 
bath towels, the kitchen towels and stuff. Uh, the reason why I like to use this is, first of all, the towels and the kitchen towels are already pretty thick, okay? So um, I don't really need like something like super thick. And at the same time, I don't want cutaway because cutaway, when you cut around the stabilizer, the cutaway doesn't go away. It stays there. And a lot of times what I do when I embroider um, my kitchen towels is I actually use a cloud covering behind it. So what I like to do is I use my tearaway stabilizer for when I first embroider it. And then what I do is I tear it away and then I use a cloud cover like Tender Touch or something like that. Or I'll use a product actually called cloud cover, which cloud cover, what it does is it covers your embroidery behind. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but there's a rhyme and reason for all this. So anyway, uh, this is cloud cover, and this is what I use for the aprons, okay? I like two aprons in the color black, and I like having the black stabilizer because what happens is when you embroider it and you turn it over, you can just put this right on top of the stitches behind your design, and this gives it a nice touch. Um, it's really the same thing as Tender Touch, okay? The only thing is this comes in the color black and the Tender Touch is in white. I think you could get it in um, Tender Touch in the color black, but it gets kind of hard to find, okay? So anyway, when it comes to stabilizers, there's usually two ways that you can buy stabilizer. You can cut, you can buy them pre-cut, okay? And they have them in different sizes. And then you can also buy them in the roll, all right? Now, usually when you buy them by the roll, not even usually, most of the time, these are cheaper, okay? Um, the reason is because you're the one that's going to cut them up. When you buy stabilizer that's pre-cut, a lot of times, not only are you just paying for the stabilizer, you're also paying for the service of them cutting it for you. And what I like to do is I like to buy the roll, and then when I have some downtime, which I usually um, use the size 12 by 10, I will actually just take this and I will just sit down while I'm watching TV or something like that. And I will take the roll and I will just measure 10 inches and cut it, then measure another 10 and then cut it and cut it. And then I have my own pre-cut stabilizer, okay? So it's just a nice, simple way for you to save a couple of bucks on the side. Now, do you really save like a whole bunch? No, well, sometimes the difference is about 2 or $3. But for those of you guys that have been watching me for a while, you guys know that to me, 2 or $3 is 2 or $3. And I always like to save money. So <laughs> I usually get the roll, okay? Now, do I ever get the pre-cut? Yes, sometimes I do get the pre-cut if I see them on sale. I'll go and I'll, and I'll snatch them up. Um, I also do get them sometimes um, for certain things, such as if I need polo shirts and everything like that. Like, uh, you know, but that's usually the cutaway. The cutaway is the one that I use for clothes, okay? So um, my rule of thumb, all right? And let me take out my notes because I don't want to tell you guys wrong, okay? When it comes to the stabilizer of tearaway, I always use these for towels and I use them for linens, okay? I'm always using cutaway stabilizer for types of fabric that do not stretch, all right? Now, if I am doing um, an embroidery on clothes, because clothes you wash a lot, right? People wear them, they wash it, wear them, they wash it. So you're always gonna be constantly either putting it in the washer and you're gonna be putting them in the dryer. For that, I use cutaway. And another thing also to think about is, remember, sometimes shirts, you know, clothing um, is sometimes mostly made, and not all the time, okay? And that's why I say mostly, okay? Sometimes some shirts come, they're made out of stretchy fabric. Now, when you're dealing with stretchy fabric, I always use cutaway stabilizer, and um, when it comes to clothes, I use cutaway stabilizer too. So whenever you are, let's say you're embroidering a shirt and you're doing like a logo or something like that, I always use cutaway. Now for those type of things, I always end up buying the pre-cut sheet, the pre -cut sheets. 
and these are the ones that I use. This is Cutaway, and I kind of like the this brand. I always get this from Amazon, and I always get the big bunch. As you can see, this is 200 pieces. And this is the other thing, too, that I usually do, depending. And this is the other thing, too, that I always conscious, uh, not conscious. I kind of always want people to know, and I always tell people, um, be careful about overbuying, okay? Make sure that you know how much you're in bordering and stuff like that. Don't go around like the same thing like with threat, right? A lot of times people say, well, how much should I buy? So I always tell them, well, how much do you produce? What, what is your production like, okay? Are you always constantly getting orders or are you just in bordering for gifts? Are you just doing like sometimes or whatever? You know, at when when you're not when you don't have a huge volume of orders and stuff sometimes it's not really beneficial for you to go ahead and just buy a whole bunch now for me i do sell a lot um you know i don't not only just do i sell online but i also do do a lot of local sales right so i have like now i have a big order for a wedding that is coming up and i'm doing dinner napkins i also have a big birthday party and i'm doing dinner napkins for them as well um you know and then i also have a company that reached out to me and i'm going to be doing their shirts so a lot of times you know when i get these local orders they they do become a lot because a lot of times they don't they're not asking for one shirt or two shirts sometimes they come to me they, i need 10 i need 15 20 shirts so it's a lot right so my volume is kind of big so when it comes to getting supplies such as stabilizers and threads and all that kind of stuff i do buy a lot however though just because i have a lot of sales doesn't mean i just go out and buy like a whole bunch okay you have to be very careful because the last thing you want to do is to spend so much money on your inventory and then if something goes like you know south like you know maybe sales slow slow down and all that kind of stuff it can really cut into your profit right so um usually what i'll do is i will buy like let's say for for instance this right this is um cutaway stabilizer it's 200 in a pack okay and usually what I'll do is I'll buy two packs. So I'll have like 400 sheets of cutaway stabilizer. So usually what I'll do is I'll have one pack under my machine and then I have another pack in the closet. That's as much as I will buy. The only time I will go out and buy another pack of this is when I see that I've used up one pack, okay? Because the last thing I want is for me to like ever run out. The same thing I do with like the bobbins, okay? So, you know, it's like, like right now I am running low. I only got like one box left of, of bobbins. I kind of like chanced it one year and I bought, you know, like just one box. And the next thing you know, there was a shortage of bobbins, started getting orders and I started freaking out. And I had to like go all over town looking for bobbins. So, you know, just be careful about your inventory, you know? You know, I got a little off track, but... I just wanted to really tell you guys about that. Okay, so anyway, because you could do the same thing with stabilizer, as you can see. Okay, um, I do a lot of kitchen towels. Okay, and I do a lot of dinner napkins. I, you know, my kitchen towels. I use tearaway stabilizer. So I usually have three of these in house because I just go and I just cut them you know, with a ruler and I do, you know, this is a 12 inch because sometimes you can buy them by the different lengths, right? So I will just use this and I'll use this so that I can cut stabilizer for my towels. But because towels is really like the big thing on my Etsy shop, I use these um, quite a bit. So I do buy them in bulk. But if you are just, you know, giving for gifts and stuff like that, you're probably good with one roll. Okay, and it's gonna last you a long time because you can see pretty thick. Okay, and this does last me a long time, and I sell a lot of kitchen towels. Okay, so hey, um, cutaway uh stabilizer you can get. I mean, um, no, this is tear away. Sorry, I'm confusing everybody. I'm so sorry. Okay, this is tear away, tear away stabilizer, and even the cutaway stabilizer. Both of them you can get them in rolls, and you can also get them pre cut. But do know that when you get them in rows like this, you can end up saving a couple of bucks. 
Another thing also, okay, when you buy rolls like this, you're the one that's actually cutting out the stabilizer that you need, all right? Now, sometimes people come on and say, well, Jeanette, do you waste? No, I don't. And I'm going to tell you what you do, okay? As you can see right here, these are extra stabilizers, okay, that I have cut from different rolls. And what you do is you don't throw out the excess, okay? Take a little clip, put them together and stuff. And then when you have little small projects, like let's say somebody comes to you with a little bag or something like that, that they need to have embroidered, before you go and you cut, you go into your roll and you cut another uh, sheet, look through the stabilizer that you already have pre-cut and see if you could use that. Okay, so don't throw away extra stabilizer. You can always use it, all right? And you know what? I'll leave this out too because there is so much here that I could also show you as well. So I'm gonna show this out. Okay, so cut away and tear away stabilizer come in different weights, all right? But you use them for different purposes, like I said. Um, tear away stabilizer, towels, and all that kind of stuff. Cut away is what you wanna use if you're using it on clothes, especially clothes that have fabrics that are very stretchy like polo shirts t-shirts um you know if you have a jean jacket this is a perfect example also if you have a jean jacket and you look at the fabric okay the first thing i do when i'm embroidering clothes is look at the fabric and see if you can stretch it if you see that there is no stretch tear away you can use tear away if you see that there is stretch in that fabric cut away Okay, that's a good way to do it. Now, also remember the reason why you want cutaway also is because if you have clothes that you wash a lot, you don't want the stabilizer to go away because remember, the whole purpose of stabilizer is to provide extra support to your embroidery design on the fabric that you're embroidering, okay? That's the whole reason why we use stabilizer is because it's giving you extra support, okay? So, you know, just remember that. And, and, and when you are doing clothes, let's say you have a polo shirt and you have the, the embroidery on here, you want to be able to maintain that extra support. Now, if you have a jean jacket and the jean jacket is not very uh, stretchy or anything like that stuff, so cutaway is fine. That means that the fabric is strong enough that it's going to be able to hold that design. Now, also, you have to think about another thing, too, your design itself. There are some designs out there that are pretty light, okay? When I'm saying light, it means that it's not very um, condensed in the stitching. If you have a design that's very, very dense, a lot of times you're going to need a strong stabilizer because it is really going to be you're going to be hammering down a lot on that um, on that fabric. So you want to be able to really give that fabric all the support that it needs as you are in watering, all right? So that's another thing. Um, let me see. So I, I talked to you guys a little bit about the, the, the um, cutaway and the tearaway. The other one that I use a lot now that I'm going through my little stash is I use, um, oh, where did it go? I had it. Um, sticky stabilizer. There it is. All right. Sticky stabilizer. And which you can see I'm running low. So I'm going to have to go out and buy some more. What do I use the sticky stabilizer for? The reason why I use sticky stabilizer is whenever I am in watering um, bags, okay, which I am using my fast frames, I will use the sticky stabilizer on that. The other reason you would want to use sticky stabilizer is let's say you have like a fabric that is pretty uh, slippery, okay? Not only do you want to have a sticky stabilizer so that way it can really hold on to that fabric and it won't shift on you, but you're going to want to slow down your machine, okay? A lot of people come out and they always say, well, my machine can stitch about a thousand stitches per minute. My machine can go up to 650. Just because you have that speed doesn't mean you have to use it. Something to think about, okay? Because you got to remember, sometimes the best things in life take time. So <laughs> when you rush, you can end up with a little bit of a mess. 
So um, sticky stabilizer is really great if you are embroidering stuff such as dinner napkins, because the dinner napkins, you want them to lay flat. You don't want that fabric to do any type of shifting or anything like that. So when I'm doing dinner napkins, this is my baby. Okay, I, I use this. Um, another reason I use this is, let's say I am using my fast frames. And for those of you guys that don't know what fast frames are, um, this is like one of the hoops for the fast frames. Okay, these are some of the hoops. This is for the multi-needle machines. And what I usually do is I will stick the uh, stabilizer underneath and then I will insert this in a bag, like a backpack or something like that. And then I will put this on the machine, okay? So um, it kind of helps to hold things in place. Now, some, some, uh, some sticky stabilizer is really, really good to hold an item. Some sticky stabilizer can be a little kind of flaky. So a lot of times what I usually do is I use double-sided tape as well. And I put the double-sided tape on the on the sides of the fast frame. So that way it can also give it that extra grip, okay, on the bag and stuff. I also slow down my machine and I do babysit items that I use that I do put on my fast frames. I don't walk away from the items because you just never know what can happen. Okay. So um, sticky stabilizer is something that's really great. Um, I usually use this for a lot of bags. Okay. Now let's talk about something else. All right. Um, you know, we got our, uh, tear away. We got our cutaway. We got a sticky stabilizer. There is another stabilizer out there that a lot of people sometimes they just don't know about. And that is called no show mesh. Now, when would you use no show mesh? Now, no show mesh is this stabilizer right here. Okay. Now, this is very similar to cutaway. All right, now there are two types of no-show mesh that you can buy. You can buy it with adhesive and you can buy it without adhesive. I actually like the adhesive one, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because it kind of really, you know, you, you just turn your shirt inside out, and then what I'll do is I will cut the piece that I need that's, you know, for the embroidery, and I will iron it on. And I like that because it stays nice and flush with the fabric. And then I can go ahead and I can start embroidering. Now, this is very popular if you are embroidering something like a t-shirt. That is something that a lot of people sometimes have problems with and they complain about. It's like they'll, they'll have like a little shirt, you know, they'll take a t-shirt or something like that, and then they embroider on it. They'll either use... Um, you know, a cutaway stabilizer, or they'll use a tear away sometimes. And then one of the things that they say commonly is that after they're done embroidering, they say, hey, I can see the stabilizer through the shirt, right? Because the shirt is sometimes pretty thin and sometimes you can see it. So this is what this usually is for. And it's actually really, really, really good, okay? Now, what I do is when I am doing shirts, this is what I use, okay? Now, not polo shirts, though, because, see, when I embroider polo shirts, usually the material on the polo shirt is pretty thick, right? So because the material on the polo shirt is pretty thick, I can get away with the cutaway. And you don't see the cutaway stabilizer around, you know, in the inside of the shirt. Usually, if you're using something like a white shirt, that is when you sometimes see the stabilizer through it. Okay, so that's why I, I don't recommend using a cutaway or tear away. I would say use a no-show mesh, okay, because this is really strong. This is very, very, very strong. It works really well with the fabric. And what I really like about it is that you really don't see it through the shirt. And you can cut around it, and it looks really, really good. So um, this is really good. I always get the one with the adhesive. They do have some without the adhesive, but I like the adhesive because I like to iron it on the shirt. That way I know that the stabilizer is nice and there. And then when I'm done,
you know, and I just lightly iron it. I don't like, you know, put it in my heat press or anything like that. I just lightly iron it. And then um, when I am done in bordering, then I'll just take the size and then I'll just like peel it off and then I'll just cut around it. Okay, I just cut around it. That way it looks really, really nice and stuff. And then I'll go ahead and I'll like, you know, put the iron on the embroidery and stuff to make it really look nice and crisp, you know. But um, this is really, really good for um, T-shirts and stuff like that. So I've been using this. So let me see what else I got in here. I got, I'm getting all my stuff out here. Okay. Um, uh, this is one that Miss Banks had talked showed me about and i and i have to tell you i really do like this one this is another tear away stabilizer that i love and i will say though but this can be pricey 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 so if you get this tear away stabilizer what i recommend you do is make sure you save those joanne coupons and watch joanne um, when they go on sale okay because these things do go on sale so um, let me show you. I'm going to put this on the camera so you guys can see what this is. This is one that she told me about, okay? And it's called 360 EZ Stitch. In bordering into, this is a tearaway stabilizer, okay? Now I'm going to tell you guys, hold on, let me drink some water. Why, why do I like this a lot, okay? I'm going to... I'm going to show you up front. It's perforated. See? Look at that. Isn't this cool? So because it's perforated, okay, it makes tearing so easy. It really, really does. Because this is one of the things that kind of concerns me sometimes with the tearaway stabilizer. When you are tearing the stabilizer, be very gentle when you are tearing it away because you got to remember stitches are holding on to that that stabilizer. So don't, you know, whenever you're embroidering and, you know, because I, you know, and don't laugh because I used to do it and stuff, you know, you, you would have it and then you go shoot, and you just like rip it off. Don't do that. Don't do that. Put your hand on the on the design and then gently tear off your your tearaway stabilizer whether it's this this makes it a whole lot easier but the only thing that i really don't like about this is really just the price okay it is more expensive but once you start using this you start realizing why it's expensive because it really is better okay so it's the quality so um this is really good. I'll put this on here again so you guys can see. It's from Pelton, and it's called 360 Easy Stitch um, Embroidery Interfacing um, Tearaway. And like I said, it has the perforated sh sheets. She's the, uh, Miss Banks was the one that told me about it. She mailed me like a little sheet, and then I tried it, and I was like, oh, I like this. So now what I do is I actually go to Joann's whenever it's on sale and I try to buy as much as I possibly can because this is really my go-to. Um, I still do use this because hell, I got it, you know, so I might as well use it, you know, but um, this is still good too. Don't think that you have to use this. You, This is just as good as well. But just to, just I just want to let you know this option is out there as well. So, you know, this is another one that's really, really good. Where am I going to put all this stuff? All right, let me just put this on the side. All right, so I already showed you the tearaway with the preparated one. That's really good. And you can use that on towels, okay, and baths. You know, that's the one, you know, my tearaway, I always use it for those two items, okay? I'm going to put this away too. Okay, I got this. I already showed you guys this. Okay, I'm trying to, okay, we did no show mesh and we did the cutaway. Okay, now this is the cutaway eight by eight. Okay, and these are usually the cutaway that I use when I'm embroidering logos, the, the three by three, three inches by three inches logo on polo shirts and stuff like that, cutaway. Another thing that you can do also, well, not really, because that's for tearaway, baseball caps. If you need stabilizer for cape for baseball caps, another thing too, sometimes they do sell the stabilizer that's kind of like pre-cut for baseball hats. Okay, to embroider those little tip, you can buy these 
okay, which is eight by eight by eight. And then what you do is just cut it in half, cut it in half in one sheet. You have two hats that you can embroider, but that's um, tear away for the baseball hats. This is cut away, but you can get this um, um, tear away in, in pre-cut also. All right. So just, just know that that's just a little tip also. Okay. Let me see what else I got in here. Hold on. All right. So just like I had that roll of tearaway, this is a roll of cutaway, okay? And I usually buy my cutaway medium weight, okay? The reason why I do that is because, you know, uh, I just feel it's better to just be in the middle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. So, you know, because sometimes I see the light weight and then I see the heavy weight and then I figure I could get away with um oh okay um you know i could um sorry i had someone that text me you know i i you know like sometimes you can you could use light stabilizer or you can use a heavy stabilizer i kind of kind of go in the middle because i figured you know if i need light stabilizer i do the medium and if i need heavy stabilizer i can just take the medium and if i really need it to be heavy heavy i could just double up that's usually what I do, okay? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, if you were to go out there and you would buy every single stabilizer that you see, you'll go broke. I'm telling you, I'm just saying, because there's just so much stabilizer out there, okay? So I just wanna show you the ones that I use and seems to kind of like work for me. So I always do the medium weight when it comes to the cutaway, because I figured you could do medium weight, if you, you know, if you needed light, you could use, still use the medium, you're not gonna go wrong with it. But if you really need it heavy, just double up on the sheet and then you're good to go. And it, it works, you know, and stuff. So let me see. And what else I got in here? All right. So, um, all right. This is another stabilizer that I purchased from Allstitch. And this is the Pro Performance Stabilizer. This is very similar. And I'm going to pull a sheet out so that you can see this. This is very similar to the one that Ms. Banks told me about, but it said, this is not tear away. This is cut away. But as you can see, it is perforated also. I actually really liked this. This is very, very, very strong. Okay. Usually when I use the regular cutaway stabilizer in order to embroider logos for shirts, I usually double up. When I use this, I just use one sheet and I'm good to go, no matter how dense the design is. So it seems to really um, work really well. Now, I am going to tell you it is a little pricey, you know, but I did buy a pack. I bought like 125 of them. I still have plenty and they seem to work really, really well. Um, and I got a feeling I'll probably just buy more of these. And I got them from All Stitch, and it's from the Pro Performance. And this is the eight, eight and a half by eight and a half. You can buy them in different sizes if you if you want to. Um, all Stitch, you know, sells all types of stabilizers, but um, and the different sizes, and they also sell the different weights as well. But I wanted to give this a shot because I was doing a lot of logos for a lot of different um, small businesses around here. And these really seem to work really well. So it's just something that I just wanted to show you guys that I've been using. Um, and, you know, what I really like about this is that I only use one sheet instead of using two cutaways. So in a way, it is a little pricier. But at the same time, I feel like I might be saving a little more money because at least when I use the regular um, cutaway, when I'm using this and I'm using two sheets, if you really think about it, that means that I'm using this more than this. So I actually think I really do save more money if I just use, if I just spend the extra couple of bucks up front. Um, in the long term, I, I end up, you know, saving more by using this stabilizer than using the cutaway. Okay. So, um, yeah, wanted to show you that one. It was just something that um, I saw. On their website and i wanted to give it a shot and you know it worked out really good so i was just like really really amazed um by that stabilizer i thought it was really really cool all right let me see what else i got here okay ah all right so just like here my eight by eight i have cutaway i also have the tearaway okay 
And um, I use this both. Um, this I usually use for my dinner napkins, okay? Um, as you guys know, I love doing dinner napkins, especially gifts for friends, you know, when they buy a new home or, you know, if they're having like some kind of uh, event or something like that. And I'll ask them, I'll say, hey, do you want me to make some dinner napkins for you or something? They, they always love that. So, um, you know, I like to use the tearaway for the dinner napkins. And um, this works really well. I use the eight by eight um, because I use my five by five hoop to do the designs. Usually my designs for dinner napkins are no bigger than four by four. Okay, um, they could be a little bit bigger sometimes depending on the design, but I usually like to have it four by four or smaller. And I always like to put it in the corner of um, the dinner napkin. So um, yeah, but I do use these. I kind of like this brand, the new um, Brothery. Their brand really seems pretty, pretty, you know, pretty good. Um, and I like them. Um, you can easily get these off of Amazon, you know, um, and you could probably go to their website and try to pick them up from there also. Um, but, you know, they're, they're not too bad and not too expensive. So, you know, it seems to be, they, they seem to work pretty good for me. So these stabilizers, um, are pretty good for me. Okay, now the other thing, let's talk about, um, let me see. Oh, I got more stuff back here. All right, let's 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 keep rolling. Okay, what else do I have? I'm really cleaning up over here, ain't I? All right, see, okay, this is the other thing too. See, to see how I was telling you? This is what I use for hats. See? And all it is is this, cut it in half. Just a little tip, okay? That's all it is. Just cut it in half. And whenever I have to embroider a baseball hat, I just take one of these sheets. Because that's the other thing, too. When you go to these websites and you see these stabilizers and they have, you know, it, it's really like the material. It's like, um, you know, it's either like, uh, you know, cut away, tear away. They have the different uh, uh, weights and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes what you got to do is because you can really spend a lot of money, you know, you can end up buying the roll, you can buy the pre-cuts and they have the different sizes and all that kind of stuff. So usually what I start doing is I start thinking about it. Okay, well, if I buy the pre-cut, they want some kind of dollar amount, right? And then if I want a different size, then it's another dollar amount. So usually a lot of times what I do is I actually in, prefer to really buy the rolls like this, Okay. And then I will take my time and I will measure and I will pre-cut my own stuff, okay? I just find that getting the rolls are sometimes a little bit better, okay? Now, the 8x8 eight eight is a size that I do use a lot. So whenever it comes to um, pre-cut stabilizer, the eight, if I have to buy a stabilizer that's a certain size, I'll usually do the eight by eight for the simple fact that it's really good for logos and my dinner napkins, right? So for that, I will stock up on this. And if I have the time, then I will cut my own uh, stabilizer in that size. But when it comes to buying stabilizers for my baseball hats, I kind of prefer to take the time and just measure. Like if you really think about it, if I look at this, right? I can measure from here to here, and I can probably, probably do one, two, three. So one sheet will give me like three of these for three hats, you know? And then if you, and, and a lot of times, sometimes you, you when you're buying stabilizers for the baseball hats, a lot of times it's, it's, just, it's just this size, and then it comes in like a roll, or sometimes they'll give it to you in sheets. But to me, I just look at it like that. Like, you know, you just got to cut it up. You know, you save a couple of bucks doing that. Just say, you know. So, I mean, it teaches all, but I, I I, prefer to do that. I prefer to cut to cut my own stabilizer if I can. And stuff. And then if I, if I need to cut a piece and, you know, I do have some extra, then what I'll do is I'll just take that extra and then I just pin it to the other stabilizers. And then what I'll do is I'll just use, you know, um, whenever I have like another project that comes in, I kind of go through this stash first. Like right here, I have, this is sticky stabilizer in black. In black. So 
so like, let's say I have a dinner napkin that, you know, black dinner napkin that somebody wants gold thread or something like that, right? Well, I'll be like, oh, okay, well, let me use up these, these sticky stabilizers that I have in black. And then I'll, I'll go onto the roll, okay? And stuff. So that's what I usually do. And then as you can see here, I have some uh, water soluble stabilizer on the top. And then I also have plastic. And I use plastic sometimes for patches and stuff. Sometimes people want me to embroider some um, gift tags or something like that. And then I'll just use the plastic for that, for, for gift, gift tags and all that kind of stuff and everything. So, you know, there's different ways that you can say. Now, let's talk about the water-soluble stabilizer and stuff. Because a lot of times people get a little confused. Now, there are two places that usually people use the uh, stabilizer for. Usually when you want to give your fabric some extra enforcement, you usually put the stabilizer underneath the fabric. When you have something like heat or water-soluble topper, um, stabilizer, that is usually going on top of your fabric. Now, why would someone do that? The reason why people would do that is because they want to be able to give their stitches some kind of lift. Because usually what happens is sometimes the fabric has a little fluff in it. Sometimes it's like a little furry, or if you have a bath towel, it's kind of like really fluffy. And what happens is when you are embroidering, the stitches can sometimes sink into the fabric, and then it's going to be really hard to see. There are certain things that I kind of tell people when they are embroidering in that type of fabric that there's certain things they need to consider, okay? Well, first of all, there are, you got to think about your stabilizer, right? So you are um, either going to use uh, water soluble stabilizer, which is like this. And what this does is it actually dissolves in the water. There is also another stabilizer that is like this. Okay. And this is heat stabilizer. And this actually dissolves in heat. Now, this stabilizer is a little bit pricier than the water sol soluble stabilizer. But I am going to tell you, some people will come out and say, well, why would you even bother with the heat? Well, there's something that I learned about the stabilizer that I didn't know about. And that is the whole reason why I sometimes use it. Okay. Now, when it comes to bath towels, and I had been using the water soluble stabilizer for bath towels, and I usually use it because it is more economical, but at the same time, I kind of know for the design that I'm using, the water soluble stabilizer would be enough. However, let's say you have a bath towel, right? And the bath towel is pretty thick, all right? And you don't have the software to add knockdown stitches, or you don't have an embossed file so that you can put the lettering on top so that the lettering can can kind of like shift, you know, um, give that the lettering the lift, okay? So that way it can stay nice and clear. Well, in those situations, when you use water soluble stabilizer, one of the things that I tell people is remember the name, water, water soluble stabilizer. So if you have a towel, chances are people are gonna use that towel. When they use that towel, they use water soluble. Uh, when you have water, for, wa this stabilizer in the towel and they go and they put it in the washing machine, guess what's gonna happen? The stabilizer is gonna go away, right? And then what's gonna happen is in time, that stitching, it's not gonna look fresh, uh, fresh and crisp as it did when you first pulled it out of your uh, embroidery machine. What's going to happen in time is those stitches are going to sink into the, the fabric and it may not look as neat as it once did look when you first embroidered it. So one of the things that I learned about the heat one is if you use this stabilizer, okay, what happens is when you put it in the washing machine, this does not wash away. And even when they take this and they put it in the dryer, it will not go away with the heat of the dryer. It actually melts away with the heat of an iron, okay? And I found that very interesting. And I was like, you know what? This is perfect if you don't have the knockdown stitches. Now, 
this is something that I do caution a lot of people about because sometimes people are like, well, Jeanette, I don't have the software to add the knockdown stitches and I don't have the embossed files and I just want to put some fonts on the towel, okay? Something that you may want to consider, okay? Depending on your towel, if you have a lot of fluff, I highly recommend that you use a font that is thick. If you use a font that is very thin, eventually that no matter what stabilizer you use i think you know to me I'm, I'm just letting you know so that way you're not shocked when you wash it the third time and then you look at it and you're like no nah, i can't see it. okay it's gonna look funky i'm gonna tell you right now it's gonna it's gonna look funky because what's gonna happen is when you first embroider it right you have just literally embroidered on that on that towel so it you know the stitches are over the fibers right so everything looks perfect when you take it out of the machine when that towel goes into the washing machine right it's going through its little washing cycle and everything the fibers are moving and before you know it the fibers are going to not be underneath those stitches anymore it's going to be around the stitches okay so and if you have a a, a font that's very very thin eventually it's going to sink in, all right? So when you are embroidering bath towels, make sure that depending on how thick your the towel and the fiber is, okay, and how much fluff you have there, the more fluff, the bigger, the bigger or and thicker you're gonna want your font to be, okay? Now, also, this is really recommended, especially if you're not using knockdown stitches. If you're not using knockdown stitches, use the heat um heat topper okay this what the way you use it the same way you do water soluble topper okay you put this on the fabric all right and you embroider on it the way that you would get rid of this okay is you can easily cut around it and then the, the pieces you can't cut take an iron and just gently okay not steamy hot like crazy you know but gently this will dissolve and it's not going to damage your iron okay it's not going to damage the iron this actually really works as a matter of fact i'll only do a video on this so you guys can see me using it and it's it's really good the only downside like i said is it's expensive that's all it is but you know what i mean we talked about this before everything in embroidery is expensive and stuff and unfortunately you're going to have to come to the decision as to where you want to spend your money. Okay. Sometimes you, you know, there's certain things that you're going to want good quality and there's going to be certain things that you can kind of save a couple of bucks on. But um, when it comes to things like this, um, you're going to have to spend the money, you know, that I'm, it's sad to say, but it's true. I mean, you're just going to have to and stuff, but um, yeah, this stuff, very, very, very good. I know I gave you guys a mouthful about this, but it's really, really good. Something that I really recommend. Um, the other thing that, um, I'm going to tell you guys about regarding stabilizing. All right. Um, there are going to be times when sometimes you have a Pacific fabric that is very, very, very flimsy, very, very light. Okay. And sometimes it can be a little challenging to in water because you, when you put your stabilizer underneath, you could end up getting like stuff like puckering and all that kind of stuff. So what would you do in those type of situations? Well, that is when I say, think about starch, okay? Um, starch is really, really good because what it does is it helps give your fabric that strength, okay? Now, there are two different types of starches that I like using, all right? One of them is the Terio Magic. This is really, really good. It's liquid fabric stabilizer. And what is really great about this is that you can use this on a fabric and it's going to really give it like some type, you know, it's, it's really strong, okay? So if you want, if you're going to be embroidering on some really light fabric and stuff like that, I would say use this. I know you guys can't see it because you could part of your glare. And this will give that fabric some strength. And then what will happen is you can embroider on it really nice and easy. If you don't want to use this, not a problem, okay? Um, another starch that you can use, my sister turned me up on this. She loves this stuff, okay? She loves it. And I can see why. It smells 
really, really nice. It, it comes in different fragrances. Uh, it's Mary Ellen's Best Press, okay? And this is also a clear starch, and it comes in different um, fragrances. And this is also really good. Just spray this on there iron it on the fabric and it'll give the fabric a little bit of strength too. Don't want to use this either. Not a problem. This is something that a lot of folks in the military have used. Okay. My husband used this on his, on his uh, Air Force uniform. There you go. Heavy hold, okay? This is another starch, okay, that you can use. Now, the only thing, though, is what I'm not sure about this one is will it gum up your needle, right? Um, I have used it, and I haven't had an issue with it, but that is something that I would be kind of like, hmm, I wonder, right? But um, I do embroider slow, that I will tell you. I'm not one of those that I'm, you know, I'm always like rushing to do my embroidery and stuff like that. And I'm reading this thing to see if it says anything, but it really doesn't. But um, I have used this. I have used this and it has worked really, really good. Um, this, you know, so far I, I've had success, but at the same time also I've used uh, Mary Ellen's Best Press also. And this has been really good for, sh for sure. And also this one. And um, I've this has done really good. So you have choices out there, right? You have choices out there. So, you know, if you have issues with puckering and stuff like that, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to kind of sometimes also play around with the fabric that you are embroidering on, okay? And that, you know, when you look at that, sometimes you have to think about, you know, not only do you have to think about the design and how dense it is, but you also have to think about the stabilizer. What type of stabilizer are you going to use for that particular design? If it's light, if it's dense, and also is the fabric, okay? Um, you know, so that's those are things you have to consider. Now, I did put a link in the chat about a really good article that I saw regarding machine embroidery stabilizer. I recommend you guys look at that, okay? Um, you know, so that way you guys can get an idea and stuff. So I'm still going through, okay? All right, so the other thing that I have, all right, now let's talk about the backing, okay? I did mention a little bit about the backing. There are two types of stabilizer that I use for covering the embroidery in the back, okay? I use Tender Touch, okay? And I use Cloud Cover. Now, to me, they both work the same. OK, the reason why um, I have one tender touch, one cloud cover is really basically because of the color. That's all it is. It does the same thing. OK, now the tender touch you can buy in the roll. OK, but to save money, I buy the bulk. So this is the big bulk of tender touch. I get this off of Amazon. OK, but I'm sure if you probably go to maybe joann's you could probably go with your coupon and you can get this from there too and that's the other thing too you know i mean when it comes to stabilizer make sure you do your shopping okay go to joann's with that coupon if you can find the stabilizer there get it there if you're buying it online look for a coupon code and all that kind of stuff and everything because i am telling you embroidery is expensive all right a lot of times you know we we talked about this you know you're talking about the cost of the machine you're talking about the cost of thread then you're talking about the cost of bobbins now you're talking now today we're talking stabilizers and as you can see i have a whole bunch all right and depending on what i'm doing that's the stabilizer i'm going to use so um this i use for the backing and i use this to cover up the back of the embroidery. Now, the reason why I do that is because sometimes the back of an embroidery can get kind of unattractive, right? Because especially if you have a lot of color changes and also if you have a design that's pretty dense. So if you, like I do kitchen towels, right? And if I turn around the kitchen towel, even though the pretty side is what people want to see when they hang it in their, in their um, kitchen, but, you know, sometimes people do turn things around and you don't want them to see all that stuff, right? Um, because they, they see all these um, little tails and then they see the, the stitches going every single way and stuff. It's not really attractive looking. So in order for me to cover that so that, you know, it looks a little better, then I'll use, um, sorry, I use the tender touch. 
all right? And I use a tender touch in white because um, a lot of my towels either come in white or they come in beige. And this is um, pretty good. So it, it works really well. So I usually buy this in bulk. The other thing that I do is I buy the cloud cover. Now, the reason why I get the cloud cover is because of the color black. Like I said, it works the same way as a tender touch. Um, I will say this, though. The cloud cover, to me, feels a lot softer than the tender touch. I don't know if it's just the bulk that I got. I don't know. But anyway, but tender touch is supposed to be nice and soft. But, it, you know, the one that I got right there doesn't really feel that soft. But this does. This feels really, really nice and soft. And I like that it comes in black. Now, sometimes, like I said, um, depending on the color of the product that I am working on, if I'm working on some black dinner napkins, well, then guess what? The back will have this. Or if I'm working on the aprons, my aprons are usually black. I'll have this. And um, if I have some kitchen towels that are in black, which I do have some kitchen towels in black, but it's not for sale. I always usually sell my kitchen towels in either white or beige. OK, I don't go off selling all these different colors because what happens is you can um, end up like going crazy. You know, sometimes the more options you give people, the more issues you're going to have, you know. So you got to sometimes try to maintain your business processes. You know, you got to think about that, um, you know, not just making the sale, but how you're going to keep your sanity while you're creating all this stuff. So, um yeah, so I like the black color. Um, I think they might have this in white. And if they do, I may end up, you know, after I use up all my um, tender touch, um, if I see this in white, which I'm sure they probably do have it, I may end up going to cloud cover because I don't know, for some reason, I really like the way this feels a lot better than the tender touch. I know a lot of people are really like, they love the tender touch, but for some reason, I just kind of favor the, the cloud cover. So I may end up switching and stuff like that. So I don't know. We'll see. All right. So let me let me go down here. Let me see what else I got. Um, the sticky stabilizer. Okay, sticky stabilizer. I did show it to you guys in white, which I'm running low on. But I also am using sticky stabilizer in black. And I usually use this when I'm using uh, dinner napkins that are in black. So, um, yeah. So I have sticky stabilizer in black. And um, I do like these. I, I do use them for, for bags as well, because sometimes I'll have black tote bags or um, makeup cosmetic kits, you know, and stuff like that. So, and if they're in black, then I like to use my black stabilizer on it. Let me see what else we got here. Okay, so for those of you guys that are interested in the cover in the cloud cover that I have, because here is some that I have that's not open, so you guys can see exactly what it is that I am getting. As you can see, this is cloud cover stitch black, and it's the eight by ten by yard, and it's by it's called Super Stable. Okay, and I I did get these off of Amazon, but this is the one that I like, and and this is the one that I say that is really really soft, and I kind of like it. So, and I do have some rolls of this, but I do have them in all black. Okay, so I'm going through here and I'm looking to see. Um, also, this is more of the no-show mesh. Now, here's another little trick also that um, a lot of people don't do. Some Somebody told me about this little trick and I thought it was like so super neat. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start doing that because sometimes what happens is you open stuff, you throw them away, and then you forget about it. Okay, so when you have... Um, stabilizer right just like this right you know how you get it and it comes like in a little plastic thing and it always has the label like right here right so what ends up happening is you open it up and then you throw away everything and then let's say you only bought one and you ended up liking this stabilizer so much and then you're like you know what i'm running low now i want to buy it well sometimes what happens is you're buying so many things sometimes you can forget you can forget where you got it what was the brand and everything like that one of the things you can do is when you open this up, okay, don't throw out the plastic. What you do is you put it right in here. So this is a no-show mesh, okay? And then I like it. So if I want to know which one it is, I pull this out. This is the plastic.
Oh, no, it's not. It's water. Oh, this is for, okay, sorry. This is another type of stabilizer. I'm over here thinking that it's no show mess. See, and thank goodness that I keep the plastic in here because then I would have used it for the wrong thing. What this is, is wash away water stabilizer. So see, here's the, the little tag. So you guys can see. See what it is? All right. So as you can see, this is very different. And I'm putting this right back so I don't mess up. This is very different from this type of water. Look at how different it is. Okay. They're both water soluble topping. What do you use for what? This is what I would use for towels, um, bath towels, and everything like that. This is what you use for free lace embroidering. And if you don't know what that is, hold on. I have some free lace embroidering. Somebody gifted to me. Um, here you go. Well, let me just bring one. All right. This is some projects. Man, I'm full of stabilizer around here. Okay, these are some projects that you can do. I got this as a gift from Jan. I think it was Jan or um, Miss Banks. Oh, man, I forgot. Well, Miss, I know Miss, I think Miss Banks gave me one, but I think this, this came from Jan. She got this for me for my birthday. Well, she made it for me. And this is what you do with... That's it. Yes. Thank you, Iris. It's called freestanding lace. With freestanding lace, this is what you do with this. Okay. This is what you use this for. You would embroider this on this. And then what you do is you take this and you put it in water. This will dissolve and then you end up with this. Ain't that cute? And a lot of times people do this for like Christmas ornaments. They do this for bookmarks. It's like a whole bunch of different projects that you can do this for. It's really, really cute. They make cute gifts. And um, that's what you would use this for. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I'm really glad that <laughs> I took that tip from the person that told me about it. Because I was ready to use this as cutaway stabilizer. That would not have been a good thing. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this is, it's a good tip and I'm telling you it works is it works for me. Take, you know, when you open these things up and you have your, uh, your label, just crunch it up and put it right smack in the middle. And that way, if you pull a stabilizer and then you see the little noting in there, you can take it out. You can read it and you don't make a mistake and accidentally use the wrong stabilizer. Or if you need to rebuy that stabilizer, you already know what it is. So that's a really, really good tip, uh, especially if you have stabilizer that you're not really using that often okay, and stuff. So, uh, yeah. So let me put this back and let me see what else I have here. Okay. This is another. Yeah. This is. Nope. This is cut away. No, tear away. Tear away. Because as you can see, I was able to tear it. And as you can see, I didn't leave the thing there. Yeah. So obviously I bought this before I got that advice. So um, this is a, this is tear away, but it's, it's a little lighter. Okay. So this is light. And this is what I mean. That's why I just started buying the, the medium because the thing is, you know, you could end up spending so much money on different stabilizers, you know, cause they make stabilizers for like almost everything. All right. And a stabilizer is not cheap. It really, really, truly isn't. So this is lightweight tearaway stabilizer and stuff. And, um, you know, I, I do use this for like dinner napkins. Dinner napkins really good because a lot of times the dinner napkins that I use are pretty heavy material anyway. So and the, the designs that I put on them are not that dense. OK, I don't like using dense designs on dinner napkins because you could end up getting a lot of puckery and all that kind of stuff. So I don't like doing that. So let me see what else we got here. Um, Okay, this is the no show mesh. Okay, this is the no show mesh. This is uh another one that I get. This is the fusible mesh that I get. Okay, um, the, again from from Super Staple, they're pretty good and stuff. So I kind of like I kind of like them, um, as you can see. Um, let's see, 
This is another one, and this is a heat away, and I do have the thing in here. This is another one that is heat, and you see it's kind of messed up. I'm going to have to cut and stuff. I didn't store this very well. Um, what is this? Is this heat? Let me see. Let me make sure. Let's see. What is this? Nope, it is not. It is water. I thought it was heat. This is the water one. Water sol soluble stabilizer. Yeah, so see, that's what's really good. See, because look, I would have thought this was heat and I would have put this on my iron. So yeah, always take the stuff and always put them right smack in the middle. So that you can, as you can tell, I have not gone through my stabilizer in quite some time. And this probably was somewhere where the humidity probably got to it, maybe over the summer. There you go. Okay. Yeah, probably over the summer, the heat probably got to it. And yeah, but that's okay. That's all right. I don't waste anything. I don't waste anything. I'm telling you, I keep everything. All right, let me see. I got more stabilizer in here. Let's see what else I have. All right, I got more. Oh, what is this? Okay. This feels funny. I don't know why I bought this. This is another stabilizer. Woo! Let's see. What is this? This is... Oh, this is topping over the back. This is another... It's kind of like um, Tender Touch, and I will tell you it feels nice. It feels nice. I'm kind of glad that I'm going through this because I didn't even know I had some of this stuff in here. Ain't that something? And it's from a uh, world world winer. Okay. And this is a uh, fusible. I really like this. Oops. You know what? I'm gonna leave this out. Um, along with my tender touch and stuff, because I need to use this. I didn't even know I had this back here. Oh my goodness, look at that. All right. Oh, and I have more extra sticky stabilizer. Oh now I know this is heat. Yep. Heat stabilizer, and I got this from All Stitch. This is more heat stabilizer. And as you can see, look how little you get. You don't get a lot. Well, yeah, you don't get a lot. You can see I didn't open this yet, but you don't you don't get a whole lot. So, and it's pretty pricey. To me, to me, the heat one is pretty pricey. So that's why I'm like, I use it, you know, use and stuff. Is that all I have? Yep, that's all I kind of have. And so a lot of the stuff is more of the same. The other thing that I use um, that a lot of people use, um, and this isn't really stabilizer. This isn't really stabilizer, but if you are doing a lot of applique, you're going to want to use heat and bond light on your fabric because this is going to prevent the fraying. All right, you don't want to use the strong one. You want to use the purple one, okay? So make sure you use this one. You know, going through all this stuff, what's going through my mind is ching, 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 ching. All of this stuff costs money. <laughs> it's like ching, 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 ching. Um, yeah, and I think that's all that I have here. Now I have like a little mess, but that's okay. I'll have to uh, clean up. Yeah, sometimes it's good to go through your stuff so that you can see what you have, you know, because that's what ends up happening sometimes. And I don't know if this happens to any of you guys. Sometimes what happens is you can forget what you have. And then when you need it, you don't know you have it already. And then you go and you, you rebuy it. You buy it again, thinking that you don't have it. And you do. So I'm going to have to organize all of this. I'm just going to get this out of the way right now. And I'm going to have to organize all this. And um, maybe I should do like an inventory sheet of the stuff I have. That way. Oh, look. Little piece of stabilizer. Okay. I'm going to have to put that there. That way. I have like a little inventory sheet and stuff like that. But the, yeah, that's what ends up happening. Sometimes you have so much stuff. But you actually forget what you have. 
and then it's just a mess, you know? I mean, and then you rebuy. And it's like, oh, really? You're like, yeah. So anyway, guys, I hope some of this was a little helpful to you. Um, you know, but like I said, I, I linked that article. I think that article is really, really good at explaining the different types of stabilizers, what to use when. Um, and I'm going to see if I can do a like some kind of videos using the different type of stabilizers, especially like the heat and the water soluble stabilizer so that you guys can see um, how it disappears with the, with the iron and all that kind of stuff. So um, that will probably help a little bit. And stuff. I know I'm a little off today. I didn't have like a, um, you know, an outline to go through one by one like I usually do. <laughs> You know, I always make fun of Nancy about her and her little cute cards and stuff. And I'm always like, why you got those cards and stuff? She's like, you have an outline too. I'm like, yeah, but you got the little card. Now I know. Okay, so um, yeah. But I thought going through here and pulling out all my stabilizers, I can tell you what I have, what I use, and what I've used it for. Um, you know, it's pretty really simple with me, you know, because it's like I either use cutaway, tearaway, uh sticky stabilizer and then the toppings that's really all i really really use now you know there's just there are so many stabilizers out there you can really go crazy in and buy a whole bunch but then sometimes i think about it and i'm like well it just really depends on what it is that you're trying to embroider so to me it's like it, i usually embroider the same thing all the time which is like dinner napkins, kitchen towels, shirts, polo shirts, bags. Um, so I only need some types of stabilizers. I don't really need like a whole library of them, you know, and stuff. So, you know, I just wanted to share everything that I have that I use. Um, and I wanted to post that article on there because I know there's a lot of people out there that do more with embroidery than what, what I do. And there's just so many more stabilizers out there. Like for instance, I have, even though I have the stabilizer to do this, these types of projects, I have not really tackled uh, free lace, um, these uh, lace things, um, you know, projects and stuff. I haven't really done any of them, even though I have seen lots of them. Um, you know, I've seen people do the bookmarks, like this is the bookmark. Um, I've seen people do the Christmas ornaments. I know you could probably do maybe like little gift tags or stuff like that. Um, the gift tags, I mostly do like on patches and everything um, like this. So, you know, it just depends on what you're doing and stuff. So a lot of times too, is when you are working on something like to embroider, Google it, you know, or ask, ask other people like, hey, I want to do this. Um, and this is the type of material that I'm doing. You know, what kind of stabilizer should I use? What kind of needle should I use? Um, this is the type of design you should be able to tell people if you have a dense design or not. Um, another article, and if you guys have watched me for quite some time, you guys know that I like this article a lot. This is one that's called Fabrics 101 uh, Stabilizer and Design. If you Google this, okay, and I have it up here. Let me see. Do you guys can see that? Yeah, you can. Google that. Just go to Google and you Google this. What will happen is you're going to find this article, okay? And what it is, if you look at it really closely, see how it tells you the fabric? It also tells you the type of stabilizer to use. What I really love also is the design. It tells you about the type of design, if it should be a light design or, you know, um, dense and stuff like that. And then it also tells you the type of needle that you should be using. So this article is really good. I actually have this printed out. I've had, I've always used it. I do refer to it a lot. I have it right next to my embroidery machines. And I really like it because sometimes what happens is you could end up getting some type of item from a customer, which is a particular type of fabric. And if you're not familiar with that type of fabric, you can just look at this article and look up the type of fabric and it'll tell you what would be the best stabilizer and even needle to use, okay? So 
a lot of times people just think, oh, you just have to think about the design and the stabilizer. No, you got to think about the needle too. And that that's why I always say embroidery is really a skill. It really truly is because it's something that's learned within time. It's not something that you can learn overnight. There's a lot of things that you have to understand. A lot of things that you're going to be trying out. You're going to be testing designs. You're going to fail a lot. There's going to be a lot of times when you are embroidering something, you think it's going to come out really great. And then next thing you know, you're going to find out, oh my God, I got puckering. Oh my God. Now um, I got bird's nest going on. Oh, now the, the fabric shrunk or, um, you know, it's just, it doesn't look right. I picked the wrong colors or I picked the wrong size or that design just didn't go well with whatever product I was embroidering. But all of that is stuff that's going to come to you in time. It actually does. You know, that's the one thing that I do notice is at the beginning, a lot of people make mistakes. They get so frustrated and then they give up. But they don't really realize that as time goes on, the more you practice, the more you learn, the more you learn, the better you're going to get. And before you know it, your products are really going to come out nice and crisp. And then you're really it's all going to click together. It's, it's You're going to have a true understanding of how fabric and thread works together, how the machine works, um, how the stabilizer provides the, the fabric, the type of support that it needs in order for it to be embroidered. I mean, you're going it, it's all going to come together. So. Don't let um, don't let anything of this discourage you, okay? Because I know it can be very overwhelming. Um, just take it one step at a time, and just know that in time, as as you you practice and you do things, it's all gonna come together. And then next thing you know, you're gonna you're gonna be like, I got this, I got this, you know. And and the, and you're gonna you know your confidence will kick in. You're gonna do fine. So. Um, yeah, so those are the stabilizers that I have. Now, I know there's a lot more out there, um, but it just, I haven't tackled it yet. So, <laughs> you know, but um, anyway, I am going to now go through the chat. It is over an hour because, you know, you guys know how I wrote. The first hour, I just dig right in and I like to give you guys the topic because that way I, you know, everybody's time is precious. So that way I, I know that everyone's got, the um the 411 and then at the end of the hour i always like to go down the chat i like to say hi to everybody and also answer any type of questions that you guys have regarding embroidery or any other stuff that i even talked about and stuff so i am going down the chat and i see kathy from michigan is on the line how you doing kathy and i see christian hey judy how are you thank you judy uh, yes um me and mello did have a good ride home. It was exhausting. Um, my dad is still in the hospital. Um, he is he is hanging in there. Also, for those of you guys who don't know, um, you know, last two last two weeks I had to go to Florida. I had to help out my sister and my mom and my family out. My dad has um, leukemia and he is at the hospital right now. He's been over there. I think he's on his third week there. And he is hanging in there. Um, he's been living with leukemia for seven years. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of hard, you know, because my mom doesn't drive. And, um, you know, I went for the two weeks so that I can try to help with um, a lot of the driving back and forth between the hospital and all that kind of stuff. Um, most likely, I'm going to have to go back and help again. Um, you know, I'm hoping not. But if, if I do, then... Hey, I gotta go. Then you know, you know, and um, but I will keep doing the channel and keep sewing and all that. Me and Nancy are gonna keep doing our thing because um, it does help us because um, you know, it kind of like removes us from you know the little challenges we got going on right now. And you know, and we love doing what I'm doing and um, get helps get your mind off things. You know, at least for a little while and stuff like that. But thank you so much for asking, Judy. Um, my dad. You know, I'm hoping he will pull through and stuff and um, hope to have him home soon. And so, hey, Robin, how you doing? Hey, Jackie. Hey, Suze. Uh, Sassy. Um, hey, Karen, how are you? Hey, Love First. How you doing? I see Miriam. Oni Real Fan. How are you? Hey, Emma. How you doing? I see Tammy. Hey, Miss D. How you doing? Um, hey, Jenny. How are you? 
still pray. Oh, thank you, Miss D. I appreciate it. We are, we're all hanging in there. We are hanging in. It's a little tough, but you know, because my parents are up there, you know, but um, we're all hanging in there. And so, so um, just calling them every day. Hey, Shirley, how you doing? And so, and it's because I see you, Miss Shirley. I, you just reminded me. Okay. Miss Shirley did a live the last, um, I think it was Tuesday, because she likes to do her lives on Tuesday. And I was able to jump in, and I, you know, because I was finally home. Okay, so um, I was able to jump in. And one of the things we were talking about was what's coming um, soon is the Sew and Quilt show. There's an expo that comes every year and stuff. So last year, I went with Miss Banks, and we had a great time. And I got to meet some of you guys over there. And we definitely, and look who showed up today. Hi, Mello. How are you? You want to say hi? Okay. So one of the things that we want to do is, of course, we want to meet up again. So the Sew and Quilt Expo is going to be in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and um, it's going to be in September. So as the time gets closer, I will post the time. Oh, my goodness. You want to be in the show, too. Okay. Okay. I will post the time um, as the time gets closer and stuff like that. And then I'll probably like, you know, say, hey, guys, let's see if we can meet up somewhere and, and stuff, maybe have dinner or something like that. And, um, you know, I promised Miss Shirley I'll bring her some minis and all that kind of stuff. So I will do that because I think, you know, she's she's getting on the wine kick, you know, so I'm going to have to bring a bottle, you know, so I can share with her. So, um, <laughs> so you know, hopefully... Um, you know, we can all get together and have a good time stuff, you know, and um, the Sew and Quilt show the last year was the first time I went. And I have to tell you, I really, really loved it because it was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot, especially going with Miss Banks. She actually taught me what good fabric feels like. OK, so, um, you know, I don't want to say that you know, there's bad fabric out there, but there, there is, there's a big difference. And sometimes, you know, you kind of wonder like, why does some fabric cost more than others, right? And then um, it was really great going with her because she was able to really teach me on how to feel the fabric. And then you can kind of really see what good quality fabric feels like. And that was pretty important to me because one of the things that I wanted to do was I want to expand my um, dinner napkin in line. And I wanted to create some dinner napkins for myself. And, you know, when you are, you know, looking for fabrics for certain projects, sometimes not any kind of fabric is going to do. Sometimes you want some really good quality fabric because whatever you're creating, you want it to really last. You want it to look nice. So she was able to really help me with that and stuff. So I am really looking forward to going again. And I'm hoping that, you know, it'll be the same like last year. Miss Banks, I'll go pick you up and <laughs> go because I know I like hanging with you, girl, because you teach me so much. And uh, we also saw Mylar embroidery, which Mylar is something that I definitely want to try. I'm going to go online and I'm actually going to buy some of those Mylar sheets and I'm going to buy a Mylar design. I mean, we went to a booth and it was just beautiful. I mean, it looked like bling. It just looked like bling. It was sparkly and everything it just looked so cute. I mean, I was just like, oh, that's nice. And I'm over here thinking that they like used like a uh, sparkled, um, vinyl underneath and stuff like that but it's actually a special type of film that they use underneath the embroidery and it just really really looked beautiful so um i definitely want to give that a try and when i give that a shot you know i'm going to videotape it so you guys can see it and i hope that the camera will do justice but um to the design because all i know is when i me and miss bank saw that it was just like just beautiful it was just really, really beautiful. But anyway, I'm hoping that we can all like get together this year and, and meet up there and have a really good time and stuff like that. So yeah, Miss Shirley, don't worry. I am on it. Um, and you know, we'll we'll get together and really have a good time. Hey Alice, oh thank you. I appreciate it. Hey Ozzy, how you doing? Um, let's see, I see Kelsey. Hey Yola Bean, how are you? Hey Paul, how you doing? Let's see. Hey, Linda, Kelsey. Hey, Young Gifted. Miss Miss Max, how are you? 
Um, let's see. Shirley, hey, Angela and Stitches. I see Patricia, Alicia, Linda. Let's see. Hey, Debbie, how are you? I see Peggy. Hey, Deborah, how are you? Um, oh, busher paper. I just want to use a busher. Are you using busher paper for stabilizer? That would be interesting if you are. <laughs> Hey, Jill. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I really am. I mean, we are a little worried um, about my dad. He is up there, uh, but we are hoping that he gets to come home soon. It's been kind of really crazy. It really has. Um, you know, um, it's, it's uh, been a little on the wild side, you know, <laughs> but we're uh, we're hanging in there. Um Okay, Tammy said, does the gummy, does the sticky stabilizer gum up your needle? Okay, Tammy, I have heard that it can sometimes do that, but usually what I do is when I use a sticky stabilizer, I kind of do run the machine at a slow pace, and that sometimes does help, okay? Another thing that I also sometimes do is I do take like, you know, when I'm done using the sticky stabilizer when I'm embroidering, um, if the needle hasn't been, because um, I change my needles very often. I do change them every eight hours, and you should be doing that. Mello, what are you doing? Okay, I just wanted to make sure he's not, oh, okay, that, you know, he's not chewing on my stabilizer and stuff, because I could just see the water stabilizer in, in Mello's mouth, right? Anyway, so um, if I, I use a you know, I do change my needles every eight hours because you really should do that. And that's one thing that I tell people, please don't be cheap with your needles because if you overuse your needle, what happens is your needle becomes dull and your embroidery is not going to look that great because what's happening is it's going to punch your bigger holes in there um, in, in your fabric. So um, a lot of times if I, you know, if I'm, it's a brand new needle and I use sticky stabilizer. I usually take a little cotton swab with some alcohol and I just kind of clean the needle, the edge of the needle a little bit when I'm done embroidering and stuff. And then I'll just keep using that needle for the full eight hours. So that way um, I know that, you know, I'm good. So, but, you know, I have not personally had an issue with the sticky stabilizer, Tammy, but I have heard some people complain about it, so I think it could be the brand, maybe. Um, I use, oh, shoot, I don't even know the, the brand that I have, but I do I do know I got this off of Amazon, so if you go to my Amazon storefront, you can see the type of st uh, sticky stabilizer that I've used. I believe it's World World Near. I think that's the brand that I've been using and stuff, but um, yeah, I would just... Um, I would ask around um, of folks that use sticky stabilizer, what brand they use. Don't ask me right now because I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't keep my little label in there. Okay, so I don't know. I do know that I bought this off of Amazon, and you could probably find it on my storefront. Okay, but and this has not gummed me up. Okay, um, but I do slow down my needle. I'm not one of those where I rush my embroidery. Um, the fastest. I run my machine has been 900, but I usually have it at 800 stitches per minute, um, especially my multi-needle machines, because I really just don't like to rush my work. Um, that's just how I do. But, you know, um, let's see. Hey, Kelsey. Good to know. S sticky. Uh, now, how much you slow down the machine when embroidering towels? I 800. 800 Kelsey. Um, I do 800 stitches per minute. When I am embroidering um, logos on polo shirts and stuff like that, I slow it down to seven to 600 stitches per minute. Okay. Especially if the logo has small fonts. I don't want to rush that. I want it to, because I want my fonts to look nice, smooth, clean, and crisp. That's usually how I like my stuff to look. So I always, um, you know, uh, use that. Oh, only real. Sticky stabilizer isn't strong at all. Yep, it is not. I will tell you this, and I totally agree with only real fan. The sticky stabilizer, it does hold, but it's not super strong. 
Okay, so if you're going to be using this on a fast frame and you have like a bag or something like that, um, it helps some, but I would not just use this. What I would use along with this is this. Um, okay, all right. This is what I would use as well. I don't know why. I feel like it's dark in here. I don't know. Am I in, is it me or is it just dark? Yeah, I think it's dark. I don't know. Well, anyway, let's go back to it. Uh, only real fan. Okay. He mentioned, let me add you in here before I forget. <laughs> okay. It isn't strong at all. Now, it depends. Some brands are stronger than others. Okay. Now I do know that I have gotten some sticky stabilizers where they're kind of strong. And then I have some that are kind of like flaky. Okay. It's not that strong. However, whether this is strong or not, I don't just use this. Okay. Cause sometimes people are like, Oh, just use a sticky stabilizer. No, it depends on your product. Okay. If you, if I using this to hold down a piece of fabric, okay. And it's, there's no weight to it or something like that, you know, then I'm fine with this. However, let's say you have a book bag or something like that. Maybe this is it. Yep, this is it. Okay. Let's say you have a book bag or something like that, right? Um, and I need it. I, I want to I wanna put the monogram on a book bag, okay? Then instead of um, just taking the sticky stabilizer and putting it underneath here, I use this. Now, what is this? This is double-sided tape, and this is strong double-sided tape. And what I usually do with this is I take this, okay, the double-sided tape, and it, it, it is very, very, very strong. And what I do is my sticky stabilizer is underneath, and then this double-sided tape, I put it on top of the edge right here okay then i put the bag on it now that means that this area right here that has the double-sided i mean this this area right here that has the sticky stabilizer is going to kind of like a heat is it's, it's going to be sticky to the actual product However, I have the double-sided tape on this side and this side and this side. This is going to actually give it extra hold too. Because remember, when you are embroidering, you don't want the bag to shift, okay? Because if it shifts in the machine, it can really mess up your, your embroidery. It's not going to look straight. It's going to go crooked or whatever, right? And then you can have nesting and all that other terrible stuff. So you don't want that. So I usually, what I do when I have like book bags, lunch bags, tote bags, uh, makeup bags, lap laptop cases. That's another one that I embroider a lot. I use the double-sided tape and I put this right on the edges, right on the edges. And then at the bottom, I use the sticky stabilizer. So, you know, just, uh, so something that I just wanted to share. This is like, uh, this is really good. I got this off of Amazon too and stuff. Um, and just, it's sticky. It's, it's double-sided tape. Really, that's what it is. And you want the strong one. You don't want the weak one. Because remember, you know, the you already get have um, stickiness with your stabilizer. What you want is you want something really strong because you don't want the bag to shift. Because you got to remember the machine while it's embroidering, it's moving the bag back and forth, it's sideways a lot and all that kind of stuff. And you want it to really stay intact on that, on the hoop. So this is like really, really good. So yeah, but um, only real grand, uh, only real fan. <laughs> Thank you so much for that comment because yes, we, we do need to talk about that and stuff. Um, let's see, Did oh, Jackie said, did you know that the extra bobbin case that comes with your SC1900 is supposed to change out? with the one that's already in when you are in bordering. Yes. You're supposed, well, yes. I always use the same type of uh, bobbin when I'm embroidering and when I'm sewing. Okay, now 
if you want to use a different type of bobbin for sewing, yes, you're going to have to change out the bobbin case. So that way, you know, and I use pre-winded, pre-wounded uh, bobbins. So I have to change out the case on that. Um, yeah, Jackie. Oh, I never heard of that before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes that's, you know, Jackie, a lot of times people have issues when they use the pre-winded um, bobbins. Okay. And because I like those for sewing and embroidery, because I don't use different bobbins for it. So I usually use the same bobbin for everything. So what I did was I just changed out the case and stuff, but it, and it works great. Um, Ozzy says he disliked sick. Uh, he doesn't like the sticky stabilizer, but he used he loves using sticky cutaway when embroidering performance shirts. See, okay, I have not tried that. Okay, so there, and this is the other thing too. There are so many different uh, stabilizers out there. So Ozzy's already mentioning one that I haven't really tried, which is the sticky cutaway. And I've heard of that. Okay, and he likes doing that when he's embroidering performance shirts. So you know what? I might have to give that a shot and try that because the ones that i use for performance shirts are the ones that i got from um all stitch which is the the one that looks perforated that i was showing you guys before um those are the ones that i use for that shirt but now that you're mentioning the sticky cutaway i think i might have to give that a shot ozzy thank you for um mentioning that um let's see let's see oh robin says I use no show mesh for my embroidered quilted blocks and mug rugs. And you know, I have not done quilted blocks or mug rugs. I said, I'm always embroidering the same stuff. And I tell you, I want to do other stuff, but I don't have time. Because every time I end up wanting to do something, then what happens is I end up with a sale and then I gotta like, stop what I'm doing. You gotta, you gotta fill the set. So it's like, oh my God, all right. Um, the other, this is another question. Um, do you only use no show mesh or do you use tear away with it also? No, I only use the no show mesh small fry. Um, you know, that is all I, I use. Um, no show mesh is pretty strong. It's not, you know, you don't really need another type of stabilizer on it, but it depends also on the type of fabric. Okay. And stuff, but I like the no show mesh. Okay, Mello got my sock. As you can see, he is uh he's a trip. This this dog, he really truly is. I mean, he's just uh, Mello. Stop. You know, he um he will go after clothes. He will. I mean, it's just amazing. You know, we have so many shoes where it's just one foot, and then the other shoe is just a mess. So. And he's looking for attention. That's really what it is, as you guys can see. And he has my sock and my shoe right there. See? This is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Mello, we're talking about you. All right. So, yeah. But, I, no, I usually use uh, no-show mesh uh, by myself. Um, let me see. How do you add the tender touch? Okay. Um, I usually use a heat press for the tender touch. Um that's how I add it. You can do an iron. However, though, some people do have a problem using the iron with a tender touch because if you don't have the right pressure on it, then what ends up happening is when you go to wash it, it's going to come off. Okay. So, you you know, to me, I have a heat press. So, it you know, it, it, it kind of puts enough pressure and enough heat where when I am done, it actually kind of like looks like it's married together. Like it's really like it really adheres really well to the actual um, towel and fabric. No, nope, leave my stabilizer alone. Sorry, he was going for the good stuff. Okay, so yeah, so that's how uh, that's how I add it, Linda. And so, hey, Kimmer, how are you? Um, yeah, Robin says she irons it, you know. But like I said, you just got to make sure you have the right pressure on it i gotta watch him because you know let me just start moving my stabilizer over there because he's eyeing it and then before you know it i'm not gonna have any stabilizer because mellow has like done me in so i gotta like move it over before he uh 
I'm telling you, he is a he's a handful. He really is. I love him to death, though. I adore you, Mello. But boy, you can be a challenge. All right, now that everything is here, um, I know, I know you see it. Oh my God. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, I just want to make sure that everything is away. Hold on. All right, cause uh. Yeah, I don't want him to get to anything. And I'll have to uh, fix this up later to make it neat. Because then I won't be able to find anything. You know, now he just ran off with the sock. I hope he ran off with the sock and he didn't run off with anything else. Because he is, um, he's a handful and stuff. So I usually like to have my stabilizers organized and stuff so that when I need it, I, I know exactly which one is where and um i like to keep the ones that i use all the time accessible which is usually the tear away the cutaway and the ones for the logos he's uh he's a mess okay so mellow what are you doing okay so he is he's a mess Look at him. Okay, so he is playing around with Fred because he's got Fred's sock. Okay, so yeah, so that dog. Okay, so hey, Kimber. Okay, um, hey, Iris, how are you? I hope you're doing good and that you're feeling good and stuff. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Hey, Diane, buenas noches. Um, hey, Laura, how are you doing? Oh, welcome to my live. First time. First timer. Okay. What stabilizer can I use for a handkerchief? You know, Kelsey, when I did my handkerchief, I will tell you, you got to, you, I, I had to use a very light one. And one of the things that I did was I used a no show mesh. Okay. On that. Um, and I have to tell I don't like embroidering the handkerchiefs. I, and, um, the other thing that I did with the handkerchief is I actually used starch, okay? I used a no-show mesh and I did starch. The thing that I don't like about the handkerchiefs is that they are so light. Fabrics that are very, very light, I usually do try, you know, I shy away from them because when it comes to like, you know, when I, I try to do like the, the handkerchief for the wedding about the tears and all that kind of stuff, to me, um, first of all, I, I was looking at the heat vinyl transfer and I don't like the weeding because the weeding, you know, you have very small letters, all right? And weeding small letters, even though they say do reverse weeding, I still say it's a pain. And I don't, I just don't like it, okay? And um, when I was trying to do the embroidery, when you do the small letters like that on very fine fabric okay you can end up with puckering so i really slowed down the machine at like 500 stitches per minute when it came to the handkerchief even though it did come out okay but it wasn't my favorite thing to do it really wasn't um kelsey i i just was just like Bleh. i didn't like it i just didn't like it so what i would do with the handkerchief is like i said um you know, do starch and I would do um, the no-show mesh. That's what I would do because it's very, very lightweight. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people like using the no-show mesh when it comes to like t-shirts and stuff like that because if you use um, cutaway on a um, handkerchief, a lot of times that's very light. And when, it's, when you cut it, you're going to see the cutaway stabilizer um, through it through the fabric. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people like the no-show mesh because you don't see the, 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 the stabilizer behind it when you're looking at it up front. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what I would do with the handkerchief. Um, what kind of stabilizer do you use for silk and satin robes? Uh, worried about puckers. Lori, I don't even touch that material. I got to tell, I will not touch it down. I did once embroider a satin um, scroll, okay? It was for my girlfriend. Uh, she was receiving her doctorate degree. 
and um, it was her for her graduation. And I had her like buy extra <laughs> skulls because I saw that it was like satin and satin is very, very slippery. Okay. And I was just like, oh my God. So what I did was I slowed down the machine. I was, it was, you know, I didn't have any issues. It came out really, really nice. I used sticky stabilizer for that. The reason why I use sticky stabilizer is because satin is very slippery. Okay, and I didn't want that fabric shifting. So um, I used the sticky stabilizer. I used um, water soluble top topping, even though I really didn't need to because there was really no fluff, no nothing, um, you know, on top. There was no fur and it wasn't like a towel. It was a flat thing. But I just used it because I wanted the, the threads to really give it to give the threads a little extra lift. Right. So I used um, sticky stabilizer. I used the topper on that, and it did come out really nice. It came out really, really pretty. Now, would I do it again? No. When it comes to silk, I will not touch it because silk is very expensive fabric. Okay, I will touch it if it's for it's something that I bought that I'm going to make as a gift to someone. I'll give it a shot. Will I take something that is silk or satin from a customer? No. I won't do that for the simple fact that the it, it's too risky. The risk for me is a little too high. And, you know, when you are working on other people's um, products, right, the way I usually do it is if I mess it up, I'll replace it. I always, I just replace it, okay? I don't like to put the risk on the customer. Um, if I, you know, if I can do it, I'll do it. If I, if I'm not confident, I'll let the customer know up front. I've never done this type of fabric before. It might be an issue. I might have to replace this item, okay? If I'm willing to take the risk, then I'll tell them I'll I'll replace the item if, you know, if it doesn't come out right, but you need to be able to tell me where you purchased it from so I could get your replacement. Okay? Now, um if I see that it's something new that I and it's expensive and it's an item that I'm not really willing to do, then I'll just tell the customer no. And satin and, and, and silk is just something that I just will not take from customers and I won't do it. And I've had people come to me. I even had a lady come to me with Louis Vuitton bag, a real authentic Louis Vuitton. And she wanted me to embroider that. And I was like, uh, no, I'm not doing that. Because <laughs> I was like, I know how much those bags cost. I mean, I have some. And I'm like, no. I mean, you're talking about over a grand and not even because back then, because I've had mine for quite some time. And I recently went with a girlfriend who bought the same type of uh, Louis that I have. And I remember when I got my Louis Vuitton bag, it was it was the never fill bag. It was the tote bag and it was fifteen hundred dollars. And then when she went by her bag, which was really the same bag as mine, the only thing the lining color was different, it was like $2,100. And I was like, I didn't pay that much. And of course, the guy came out and said, well, when did you get your bag? And I said, well, I think I got it about like, I don't know, like 12 years ago. And she was like, ah, prices went up, inflation. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, all righty. But I was just like, what? I was like, oh my God, those prices went up. So yeah, but yeah, I had a lady that came to me with a designer bag, wanted me to put the initials, and I said, absolutely not, I won't do it. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, worried about pucker. Yeah, and and Lori, that is what I was worried about. I was worried about the puckers. My my recommendation is make sure you don't have a dense design. Make sure that whatever design you have, it is not a dense one, and make sure you go slow. I would go very, very slow and I would use a sharp needle. That's what I would do. I would use a very sharp needle and a new needle. Don't go, you know, using an old needle and stuff. Remember, uh, you want to keep that, that the holes because the thing with satin and silk is, is, is kind of, to me, I look at those types of fabrics, very similar. Like when you're embroidering on vinyl, once you pop a hole, it, it's kind of there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can try to smooth it out and stuff like that, but it's there. It kind of is. So it's not, it's not a forgiving fabric. 
It's not too forgiving. That's that's what I'm saying. So Deborah says uh, Joanne's has a 40% off coupon this week for that stabilizer. So there you go. Um, you know that is if you if you want to get that that stabilizer, Miss Banks told me about Joanne's. Use that 40% coupon. I'm telling you, this stabilizer is very, very expensive. It's about like, I think it's like $4.99 a yard, okay? Um, and you can get it on sale for a lot cheaper and stuff. I remember at one time, I was talking about that stabilizer and somebody was like, oh, it's on sale for like a dollar something a yard. And I think everybody like ran out and go get it. <laughs> it's just like, you want it on sale. Don't pay. Oh, I'm sorry, Papa. Don't pay full price for that stabilizer. I didn't realize that you were under there. Can I get this, please? Daddy sock, huh? Okay. Look at that. He's looking at the sock like. Look at it. <laughs> uh, leave daddy sock alone. All right. So, um, yeah, so there you go. And oh, let me show this on there. Okay, Deborah, I gotta put stuff up there because um, yeah, it's uh use that coupon for that for the stabilizer. If that's not, I really like that stabilizer because it's perforated and it makes it so much easier to cut to to uh you know to tear it away and stuff like that. So there you go. Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate that and stuff and Hey, Brad, Donna. She says, I do the same. Pre-cuts concern me about waste. Yeah. And, you know, that's the other thing, too, also. You know, she, she put, this is a very good uh, comment that, that uh, Red Donna had says, when you get the pre-cut, um, sometimes you could kind of have waste. You, you really can. Um, when I do the roll, sometimes I feel like I have less waste because you're only cutting what you need. Right. But, but um, like I said, when I do the pre-cuts, I usually do the eight by eight because I know what that's for. That's for my logos and um, my dinner napkins. And that is exactly the size that I need. But as for like, you know, cut away the tear away for other stuff, I like to buy the rolls. And then usually what I'll do is I know the size that I need. For my kitchen towels, I know the size that I need for all the other stuff. So I have no problem taking that roll and just cutting them myself to the size that I need. And then that way I don't have that much of a waste. And um, like I said, sometimes you, you know, you can get more out of a roll than you really can than from the pre-cut. And you're paying extra. You're you're actually paying extra because think about it, you're asking them to cut it for you. That's really what you're paying extra for, right, Mello? Okay, now he's just like lying down and stuff. I think he's upset because I took the sock. You're mad. As you can see, he has a shoe right next to him. <sighs> Mello, what are we going to do with you? Okay, so yeah, totally, um, totally agree with you and stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, Kimmer says, I buy the rolls. Take a day to just cut some. To my size as needed. See, I'm not the only one. Every, a lot of people do that. Oh, everybody's done heading over to join. <laughs> Take advantage of that coupon. So uh the sticky it can, Galinda. Um, it it sometimes can personally, personally, I've heard some people say that, but I personally have not experienced the gumming up of the needles when it comes to sticky stabilizer. I really haven't. Um, you know, it, and, and the thing is too, is that sometimes I've noticed that when I buy the sticky stabilizer, like um, the other person had commented in the chat where he, they, they said, sometimes it's not strong enough. I have had sticky stabilizer where it's like the sticky stabilizer is really strong. And then there have been times when I've gotten a batch where it's really not that strong, okay? Now, I haven't really noticed any of the gumming up of the needle, but because I have heard people talk about it, I've always taken the practice that after I embroider something using the sticky stabilizer, I always clean my needles, okay? Because that way, when I go to embroider something else, I don't want that to get ruined. So that's why I do that and stuff. Hey, Diane, how you doing? Um... 
let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see. Hey, Margie, how are you? Um, let's see, anybody else? Today, I learned that the hard way my fonts disappear in the fabric, in, in the fibers. Yeah, that is... That is something that, you know, you learn in time as you as you start to embroider and you start to get better and stuff like that. You really start to realize the importance of knowing what type of design goes best with what type of fabrics and stuff. Like, for instance, like the, the lady that had just asked about the silk and the satin um, fabric, right? If you're going to embroider on silk and satin, I would not recommend a very dense design because that is very tricky fabric to embroider on. So that's not what you want. So usually when someone gives you that type of fabric and they give you the design, you see the design is too dense, automatically I would be like, oh no, because you would definitely have issues with puckering that. OK, you want to avoid that. The same thing like with Iris is talking about where her fonts disappearing inside the fiber. As you know, when you have a towel or you have some type of fabric that has a lot of fluff on it, you want to shy away from fonts that are thin. OK, because as time goes on, those fonts are going to sink into the fiber. You want very thick um fonts so that way they can stand out on their own okay even if you use topping uh topper stabilizer now in those situations though like let's say you have a christmas stocking right and the top of this christmas stocking is very very fluffy all right and then you want to um embroider a name use a thick font and instead of using water soluble stabilizer no, you know what? I would use water salad because you don't take Christmas stockings and put them in the wash. You don't do that. But if you had a bath towel, okay, a bath towel, like, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, somebody uh, bought a house and you want to give them a gift of, of a set of bath towels, right? And you want their, their initials on it, stuff like that. Now, they're really decorative towels. So if you really think about it, people really aren't supposed to use decorative towels. It's there to look, right? But they could get dirty and people could use them. You never know. And then they might need to wash them. Well, in that situation, what I would do is I would use the heat topper with, um, at, you know, on top of that, that towel. Okay. Because like I said, you can just with the iron, remove the excess of the, um, stabilizer. They can throw it in the washing machine. They can put it in the dryer and that, that topper is still going to be there underneath the stitches and it's still going to give those stitches the lift. It's going to be a lot better in, in the long in the long term than a, a water soluble stabilizer because remember water soluble stabilizer take that bath towel put it in the washing machine the water starts to do its thing and before you know it that stabilizer that was underneath those stitches is no longer there and um, but if you have a thick font, it should be OK, but it probably will lose a little bit of its niceness. You know what I mean? And the thing is, you always want it to really look nice and crisp. You know what I mean? So that's why it's important when you are embroidering for your customers and stuff like that. Always let them know how to care for the product when they pick it up. A lot of times people you know, ask you to embroider stuff for them and they don't know how to care for it. They really don't. And then what happens is they use it like a polo, you know, a shirt, they'll use it and stuff like that. And then they're like, oh, I washed it. And now the embroidery looks all crumply or something like that because they didn't care for it properly. They didn't wash it. They put it in the dryer. They just, they don't know how to care for it. So when you are working, you know, when especially if you're selling and stuff like that, always make sure that you talk to the customers and that you let them know, um, you know, how to care for the items and stuff. You really want to do that because, um, you know, you want people to to know how to to care for the items and stuff because it can really, you know, it can it can mess it up, you know, and stuff. So, and you don't want them to talk bad about you either because the, what'll happen is they're always going to blame you. You know, they're going to be like, oh, you know, it was nice. But then I washed it and it just, you know, that's what's going to happen. You know, so anyway, um, let's see what else we got down here. Um, let's see. 
I am getting into work from how was your father doing? What design did you do on your parents' white towels and fonts? Oh, okay. Um, oh, Margo, I think I have a video on that. And thanks for asking. My father is hanging in there. He's still in the hospital. Um, we're hoping that he gets better soon. Um, you know, for the towels that I did with my parents and I, and I don't know um, if you guys watched me last week. I, sh I was trying to show you guys ideas for Mother's Day because, you know, Mother's Day is around the corner so next month. So um, I was showing you guys a bath towel set that I made for my mom and dad where I did, um, you know, their last name. And then I did uh, the towels with my mom, my dad's name, and then the hand towels with their initials. Um, what I had did on that, I believe the font that I used for them, Margot, I know it was Stitchtopia and I believe it was Yellow Roses, if I remember correctly. And the, the, the background were in boss files that I purchased. And, um, you know, that's how I did that. I, they're not knockdown stitches. They're actually embossed files. And then what I did was I just put the name and the initial on top of the embossed file. That's how I did that one. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, um, Jackie. Yes, if you guys like this video, please give me a, a, a thumbs up because that really does help the channel. It really does. Hey, Wendy. Oh, I learned so much. Oh, I'm so glad that you're learning and stuff because that's that's the whole reason why I like doing um, this channel is that I really like to to share the information and teach you guys how to do things and stuff. And I really want to get more into sewing projects on how to do stuff. I don't know if you guys saw the last video. I went and I bought a hair wrap, you know, for like when you wash your hair and you get out of the, the you know, the, the shower and stuff. Usually a lot of people, they take one bath towel to dry themselves up and they take another bath towel to wrap up their hair. And I found these hair wraps and I was able to duplicate it and sew it. So it came out really, really nice. So now I'm sewing a whole bunch of those. So everybody in the fam is going to get one now. So <laughs> save those bath towels and stuff. But I'm so glad, Wendy, that you're learning and stuff. I think that's awesome. That means I'm, I'm meeting my goal. I'm meeting my goal. <laughs> Robin says she uses uh, Mary Ellen's Best Press all the time. I'm going to tell you, this is really, this is really good. I really do like this. And it comes in all these different um, scents. And my sister, it's like every time she's quilting and stuff like that, she's always using this and spraying it. But I got to tell you, she always like comes out of there all happy and everything. And then I joke with her and I tell her, oh, you're getting high on Miss Ellen's best press, you know, and stuff. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, she loves this kind of stuff. I mean, she she loves it. She's the one that actually got me into it, Robin. Um, you know, I learned it because of her and stuff. Yep, Kimmer, uh-huh, that starch is a military go-to, it is, it is, I'm telling you, yeah, I mean, everybody that I know that served in the military, including my husband, it's like, this is their thing, okay, this is what they do to starch their military uniforms, their pants, and all that kind of stuff and everything, so yeah, it is, it's the military go-to. Is the um oh Iris said that gummed up her her um iron. Now I will tell you, uh, Iris, that I I do see that as well. Um, I sometimes have to um take my iron and I have to clean it, and I think it is probably because of this. Now I don't think this gums up your your uh your needle uh it does it does have a tip there it says to prevent spotting maybe that's what they call it spotting make sure your irons water tank and sole plate are clean before pressing hmm. okay um yeah I guess this is better, maybe. Maybe this is better than this. But I tell you what, I mean, I know, well, this is this is something that the military folks swear by, you know. But I, I just use it because, um, especially like um, when someone was asking me about the handkerchiefs and all that kind of stuff, I starch. I starch it because that's what's going to help give it like strength, 
and stuff. And you know what? Maybe this, because this is really good too, because this is liquid. Um, this is probably something that's going to be better on handkerchiefs. Maybe I need to give this a try on the handkerchiefs. I have this and I haven't even tried it on the handkerchiefs. I tried it on other stuff, but I haven't done it on the handkerchiefs. So maybe that's what I need to do and stuff. Um, grandma used to tell me to use it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that starch has been around for years. It truly has. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's any other questions out there. Um, what is the name of the article to read? I didn't see the link. Hey, if you, I'm going to... Um, hold on. I hope I don't lose you guys while I, um, all right. Oops. Where are you guys? Okay. I hope I didn't lose you guys right there. I'm going to post the link again in the chat. Okay. Um, so who was it that asked? So Barbara, look at the bottom and you'll see the link. Okay. And that's the link for the, uh, for the, the article that I was talking about that I, I read. Um, let's see. Yep. Okay, so Leslie says she also does that um, as well. Um, but it's hard to retrieve from the inside. Girl, take a chopstick and just stick that chopstick through the tube and it'll pop that label out. That's all you have to do. Or, you know, scissors or something or a pencil or a pen or something like that. Um, let's see. And Debbie talked about, yep, two types of water soluble that I use. Um, that I took said to use two sheets, one of each to make freestanding, especially on a high stitch count one. Oh, thank you for telling us, Debbie. I did, did not know that. But see, I have not done freestanding lace. But I will tell you, though, I mean, it looks so pretty and stuff. You know, a lot of times people do this for Christmas ornaments and all that stuff. It looks really, really cute. Um, yeah, but um, I have to try one. I have to actually try that. And I'm going to I'm gonna remember that, Debbie, about using um, two sheets, especially if, if, if there's a lot of stitches on there and stuff. Um, Let's see, let's see if there's any other questions out there. Um, oh, Debbie, she, okay, she said, also the amount you wash out will be reflected on how stiff it remains. I did butterflies and Christmas ornaments and left it kind of stiff so I could shape them. Ah, you know, I gotta really try that out. I really got to try that out because a lot of people actually try that. Hey, Valentina, how you doing? Um, let's see. I've been wanting to try the heat away. Um, the heat away is really, really nice. The only thing, Eartha, is it can be pricey. That's the only thing that I say, that it can be very, very, very pricey. Um, let's see. I have stabilizer in a um, collapsible hamper, round hamper in a bucket. Yeah, I keep mine on my embroidery stand um, and it seems to work. I do have it now a little messy because I took everything out, but that's okay. Um, tomorrow I will spend time to take everything out. I like to kind of like reorganize and stuff because it kind of reminds you of what you have. You know, and um, maybe I'll do an inventory sheet also of what type of stabilizers I have. Because like I said, you don't want to rebuy if you don't have to. That is one thing for sure. And you can actually sometimes forget about what you have. It's the same thing also with threads and the thread colors, which is why, like, I like to have them visible. Okay. And if you look behind me right here, you see these little boxes and stuff. You can see I buy the clear tubs i you know sometimes they have these little tubs and they have different colors i like to have the clear because you get to see right through it and um whenever people are asking about a particular color i like to go through the whole stash first and sometimes i'm trying to see if the customer will be able to use what i have i don't like buying more threat okay especially when i've already got a whole bunch 
And um, I like to use what I have. So, you know, it can get, like I said, it can get kind of pricey, you know, it can be, it can go kind of crazy and stuff, but that's usually um, how I have it and stuff. But um, yeah, the, a bucket is a good way to have to, to do it too. Um, I want to create slap bands with labels for my stabilizers. You know, that's a really, you know, I use the slap bands, Deborah, I mean, Debbie, for my uh, fake comb threads that I use. Okay. All in those, those right there where I have all those, I have the slap bands and, but that's not a bad idea what you're saying because Metal's giving me that look. These are slap bands for those of you guys that don't know. Um, these, they go around your, you know, people use them, I don't know, for like parties, I guess, and stuff like that. I actually use these for, you know, and you can use these to wrap your stabilizer, like right here, you know, I have it a little bit kind of loose. So this is what she's talking about and stuff. Where are you? Where are you, Debbie? All right, there you go. This is what Debbie's talking about, okay? I use these usually for, um, you know, my my big combs, my threads, right? They're kind of like huggers, right? Thread huggers. But you can use these for your stabilizers too. See? Hold it in place. So you can do that. So she's talking about with labels. So what you can do is if you get like little stickers and stuff like that, that's a really good idea, Debbie. I really like that idea. You know, um, that way, if you lose, instead of keeping this piece of paper in there, you can write on here, you know, I would take like a sticker or something and then you can write what type of stabilizer it is and then just stick it on the slap band and then you have it nice and neat and when you take when you when you look at it this is a really neat idea i like that idea debbie i really th thank you i think i'm gonna use it <laughs> i think i'm gonna use it because i have little stickers and i can i can write down instead of having all this in here because you can see um like uh, the lady said, um, before you, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to go in there and, and get your, your little paper out. And then sometimes you can lose it. Sometimes you can lose this in there. So, you know, but if you have a slap band and you put the, the type of stabilizer that's on here and you put that on onto here, then that's fine. Now, the only thing is when you run out, well, if you run out, that means you're going to buy more. And if you buy more, then you can use the slap band with the label. And put it on there. So it's still a good idea. Debbie, you're onto something. See, that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So yeah, and I have loads of these. Okay. So so then I guess if you really think about it, it could serve two purposes. You know, it can be uh for your uh stabilizers. Oh wow, this is a mess that I have here. I got a really uh Oh, because it's taped on. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I had, had it taped. So, yeah, so this, you know, and this would keep it nice and neat now that I think about it. And this was water. This was what I thought was heat, but this is actually water. I can just use this. See, there was tape. Take that tape off. And then I can just, yeah, just like she said. Nice and neat. I like that idea. Debbie? Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I had this stuff and I didn't even, it, it did not click. So there you go. Another great idea. Love that. And stuff. Um, that is a very neat idea. Oops, let me uh, take that. Okay, cool. Um, and Alice says she places it in a plastic bag, um, keeps the humidity from sticking it together. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Um, I think because this is water soluble and then I have it here, it probably got humidity and that's probably why it's a little uh, 
all wrinkled up and stuff. But yeah, so now I'm really going to put this nice and neat. I'm going to really, because I have so many of these, and now I'm really going to start uh, labeling this stuff. Neat idea. I really like that idea, Debbie. Um, and they don't fit. Oh, Leslie says she tried using the slap bracelets, but some don't fit. So I use painter's tape. That's a good idea too. And you know, you could write on painter's tape also, you know, so you can actually write what type of stabilizer it is on the painter's tape. Yeah, because you know what? The slap bands will not work on my big rolls. That's for sure. I know on the real hue, but if I have a roll that's kind of like this, it'll work fine. But the big rolls, um, yeah, Leslie's right. When it comes to these type of things, there's no way you're gonna. I'm gonna be able to use a slap band on this. There's just no way. That's not just just not gonna. That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. Not on this. So, um, yeah, painters tape or whatever is gonna. Something's gonna have to. A little piece of tape or something is gonna have to um, work for this. Yeah, but um. But if you have little rolls like this, the slap band would work on some of them. Yeah, so, yeah, there's just different ideas. Or you can use the bucket, like uh, like Leslie Slat said, you know, she went to, to Lowe's, Home Depot. You can sometimes get, like, a little bucket, you know, and then you can put all your stabilizers in there and stuff like that, keep them nice and neat. I usually, like I said, I have the, the stand with my multi new machine, so I keep everything in there and, and try to keep it organized just like that. So it kind of works for me and stuff. But um, yeah. Um, where is? Let's see. Hmm. Where? Yeah. So she tried it, but didn't work. And you're right, it doesn't work all the time. But hey, if it works for some, it's okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, hey, Elma, how are you? Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad that you like um, all the information and stuff. Um, hey, Diane, how you doing? Um, let's see. I use napkin rings from the dollar store for my Cricut vinyl. That, here you go. That's another one. Um, that's another good idea. Um, you gave me the courage to expand. I ordered my, oh, congratulations. Got a great deal. Oh, Alice, congratulations on your new machine. Oh, you're going to have fun. You're going to have fun. You're going to, you're really going to love it. And so I actually like my 10 needle machine a lot. The 1055 X. I really do. I enjoy it a lot. Um, I printed out that guide very carefully. <laughs> oh, very helpful. Oh, good. I'm glad you, you found that um, helpful, Iris. Um, let's see. Do you have a video on what size needle to use on what? Yes, Linda, I do. I do. Um, I have a video regarding the 75, you know, the type of embroidery needles that I've used. Um, I do have that. Um, what was the name of it? There's one where I talked about... Um, Sometimes you have to use different size needles on a particular design, like a logo. Um, but I do have one on there on logos. I don't I don't remember the name of it, but it's when to use a 65 nine needle versus a 75 11 needle for embroidery. Um, Cause and also you know there is um, like uh, what is it uh, metallic? Is it metallic? It's metallic thread. They have a metallic needle for that too, um, but you still got to slow down your machine. Don't think that because just because you got the needle, that means you can just go ahead and just rush. You can't do that, you know. So, yeah, but I do have a, a video on that. Um, hey, Chocolate Woman, how are you? What about a stabilizer that you have used with the hole in the center? Do you toss the entire sheet? No, you don't. All you <laughs> Okay, yes, to avoid waste. Yes. All right. Hey, chocolate woman. All right, she is correct. All right, when it comes to, I do this a lot with 
sticky stabilizer. Sometimes what happens is I can have an order where I am, I need to embroider a whole bunch of stuff and I need to use sticky stabilizer. What happens is when I tear the item from the sticky stabilizer in the middle of the stabilizer, it has that hole, right? So usually what I'll do is instead of taking out the whole entire sticky stabilizer, I will cut out a piece of the sticky stabilizer and I will cover up that hole, okay, at the bottom. All right, like let's say, let me give you an example in case I'm confusing you guys. Let's make believe. This is not sticky stabilizer, but let's make believe. I have this sticky stabilizer, and let's say that I have a dinner napkin, and all it is is just one initial, right? So I embroidered the initial, and it's here. When I pull it off, what's going to happen is the sticky stabilizer in the middle gets pulled off, but everything else is intact. So instead of just taking out the whole sticky stabilizer, throwing it away, what I'll do is I will keep the sticky stabilizer in here and then I will take another piece of sticky stabilizer and I will just cut enough to cover this hole. And then what I do is I take it and I just put it in the bottom. So that way it looks like the sticky stabilizer is whole yet. And then I just take the item and then I put it on here and then I embroider it over and over again and I just keep filling that hole. That way, all I'm doing is I'm just using a little piece of sticky stabilizer to cover the, the, the hole that's in here. And I don't have to like go ahead and just cut a whole new sheet for every single item. Okay. So I hope that kind of like makes sense. But yes, I do do that chocolate woman. That is a great way to reduce um, your waste. Of stabilizer because you gotta remember stabilizer is expensive so you want to try to make it as much as you know possible and you could probably you know can you do the same thing with tear away stabilizer yeah you can um what you would do is you would put scotch tape around it and then you know when you tear it just be careful that you're not tearing the rest of it and stuff and you also want to make sure that you know because i've done that i've done the scotch tape but you want to make sure your needle's not hitting the scotch tape okay you want to make sure that you know what your needle is hitting is just pure stabilizer not whatever adhesive you're using to put everything together another thing that people have seen people do is they take temporary uh adhesive like 505 spray or something like that spray it on the the back of the stabilizer and stuff but i wouldn't recommend doing that because what it can get kind of messy and then you don't want that adhesive to get all over your machine and all that kind of stuff which is why i've seen people do that but i don't like doing that because then you, you, you and like i said it can get kind of messy i would prefer to just take another piece of cutaway stabilizer put tape on the side Okay, and then just fill that space that I'm going to embroider because I already know where it's going to embroider. I just make sure that the, the tape is far enough that the needle's not going to hit that. That way I can save the tearaway stabilizer too. So I that's what I kind of like do and everything. There's different ways to do it and all that stuff. So, you know, um, thanks for still do, doing all with this on your plate. Oh, thank you, Sandra. Keeping busy does take, does help. It does, it does, because um, you mind off of things and everything. Because like I said, this is this is a very trying time for us right now. Um, you know, um, yeah. I hope everything does turn out okay. Um, I'm me and me and Nancy are really more worried about my mom because my parents have been married for I'm 55, 55, 56 years. So, um, you know, when I guess when you've been married to someone for, for as long as, as they have, and they have a really healthy uh, marriage, they are really, you know, it's, it's really funny because a lot of times, you know, you see couples that have been married for a very long time, but they really can't stand each other, right? So these two actually like each other, you know, and me and my sister always used to be like, it's weird, because, you know, all our friends would talk about how their parents like, didn't get along or they would fight and stuff like that. Our parents actually are, they really complement each other and they really are best friends. So um, we are a little worried because God forbid something does happen to dad. 
Um, it's going to, I know it's going to be a very difficult transition for my mom. I, I just know that it's going to be, it's going to be very, very heartbreaking for her. Um, because I think when you are, you know, close to someone like that, you know, cause I even think about it with my own marriage, um, with Fred, um, even though we have not been married 50 years, we, me and Fred have only been married and we we're talking about that today. I think we're going to be married 13 years, 13 years or 12 I don't know. We stopped counting, you know, <laughs> well, anyway, but, um, you know, me and Fred are, are, are very tight, you know, we're, it's, that's like my best friend. So it's like, I really don't, I, I, it's hard for me to imagine him not being around. And I, and even when I was at Florida, um, with Mello, I know it was hard on Fred because he was here alone and he, you know, he was calling all the time and I was calling him and, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. So, you know, I am hoping that things work out. Okay. You know, I, I know people get old and, and I know everybody has their time. Um, but we just hope that we have more time, you know, and stuff. So, um, you know, and me and Nancy just really have to think about, you know, what we're going to do, you know, with mom, I know mom's going to be okay, you know, and stuff, but, um, you know, it's going to work out. It's going to work out however it's supposed to work out. That's how we look at it. Um, so hopefully things will work out okay for us. But um, yeah, um, Sandra, yeah, yeah, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be okay at the end. I know, I know that. So um, let me see. And this does help. It does help to um, just keep doing. And at the same time, you know, I got to keep the channel going because Carlito didn't graduate yet. Okay, so... <laughs> So, you know, one of the things that I was thinking was, you know, um, I had to close down my shop. So for two weeks, you know, I didn't have any sales or anything like that. And, you know, my son is still in college. He has one year left. And this is how I pay for his dorm. And this is how, you know, um, you know, for school. So I was like, I got to do something because you <laughs> can't have cardio in the street, you know. <laughs> But it is hard. It, it's, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on, but um, we'll be fine. We'll, we're, I know we're going to be fine. We're, we're all strong and stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, would like to go to this show. Hey, Guinea. Um, I will definitely be putting in um, the information. Um, I know right now it's in September. And this is the thing, too. They do offer, like, classes, like, on how to use a serger, how to do embroidery how to do sewing. And I actually want to go and take classes. Last year, I went with Ms. Banks and we just went the last day uh, because um, Ms. Banks was like, hey, you got to go the last day because that's where you could get all the good deals because a lot of the vendors, like they don't want to take the stuff home with them. So they'll like, you know, cut, cut deals and stuff like that. Um, I only took cash because, you know, um, let's be honest, you know, <laughs> I mean, you could really like spend a lot over there. So, um, you know, I took like about like two hundred dollars with me, and I think I came back with like twenty. So I think I did pretty good. I didn't I didn't spend too much. Okay, um, bought a lot of fabric. I did do that, um, and uh, you know I do want to take a class though. I would really like to like take some of the classes this year. So I don't know if I'll probably go there and stay there. I was thinking about maybe staying at a hotel over there. Fredericksburg is not really that far from me, um, so I might do the drive every day. Um, I, don't, I don't know yet, but I am going to look at the classes and I'm going to see what I can sign up for because I do want to at least take a class or two and stuff. So, um, yeah, I will definitely put the information regarding the Sew and Quilt show on the um, Facebook group for those guys, for those of you guys that do want to um, go. And, you know, they don't just have it in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I'm just going to that one because it's closer to, to where I live. Um, they do have it all over the place. So I will, as a matter of fact, I will post it on there tonight. So that way, if you can see if they have it close to you, to where you live, because I know that all of us like live all over the place, um, you may want to go and just check it out and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I went last year and I really, really did like it. And I think I'm kind of like hooked and I'll probably end up going all the time now and stuff. Oh, thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. Um, Let's see. 
Oh, what about, okay, Kimmer asks, what about uh, freezer paper? Once ironed, the fabric is easily pure. I have not used that. I have not used that. Now, I've heard people use freezer paper for like sewing and all that kind of stuff. Embroidery, I have not heard it. I mean, I think you probably can. I haven't never used it, though. That's for sure. Um, hey, Jill, how are you? How you doing? Um, I definitely... Uh, Oh, I love your top. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Actually, let me tell you about this top, Jill, since you asked about it. And so I actually bought this top from Timo. <laughs> that website that I was telling you guys about, like, hey, check it out because some of their embroidery supplies, like sewing, um, sewing pins and all that kind of stuff and everything, check them out because it is some, it's sometimes the same thing that you're buying on Amazon, but it's just like much cheaper. So anyway, I decided, let me go and see what else they have, right, to shop. So I saw they were selling clothes. So I was like, oh, sometimes I go to Walmart and I get my tops from there, right? Because I just not into the big brands and all that kind of stuff. Y'all know how cheap I am, okay? So anyway, I saw this shirt and these shirts were like, I'm telling you, they're cute. They're really cute. It was $8, $8. And I was just like, $8. I was like, okay, I'll spend $8. Let me see how they look, you know, if it, if, you know, if they, if they look good. I'm going to be honest with you. I like them. It, it really is it's not, it's not cheap. It's not cheap quality. It looks really good. Um, and um, shoot, I was telling my husband, I said, you know what? I, I think I'm going to buy buying my clothes from Timo now. I mean, I don't know. So I even told him about the website. So now he's looking at the website too. Because I was telling him some of the stuff I get from Amazon, they have them there too. And, you know, the quality of the stuff, it seems to be the same. Now, I'm not going to say that I would buy anything I see there. Um, because I'm sure that there are some items in there that you probably can get. And then you'll be like, eh, it's kind of cheap, you know? Like, there was something that I got. Let me show you. Um, I got these things. Oh, let me show you what else I got, okay? All right, because, oh, Jill, you started something now. Okay, so um, I saw these little cases, right? And then I was thinking, oh. Let me, they were like $2. These weren't a lot of money. They were like $2. So I was like, oh, let me get these. And then I was thinking, oh, maybe I can like embroider on them, right? Well, first of all, they're a little stinky. You know, they, they don't really, you know, when I first opened it, I was kind of like, oh, okay. Um, this plastic, it really is plasticky. Um, you know, it has a lining. So I was kind of like, okay. So I was thinking to myself, this would probably be good for a makeup case, right? And then I was thinking maybe I can embroider, you know, a girlfriend's initials or, or put her name on it or something like that. Now, I will say I, I didn't pay a lot of money for it. So, you know, but, you know, for what I paid for it, I was kind of like, oh, okay. And then I got one in blue and then I got one in brown. So I was like, okay, I didn't buy like a whole lot, but I was like, eh, it's all right. I mean, so some of the stuff, it's, it's just, it just depends on what you buy, right? So I, I to me, the shirt was a hit. Um, this was kind of like, eh, I don't know. It was all right, I guess. But remember, um, I bought some, uh, some towels, right? And I was doing like the fancy fonts on the towels. Well, those towels I got off of Amazon, I paid $24 for one, $24. Then I saw these towels, very similar. I mean, it's not the exact same color, but it's very similar. And this is from Timo. And let me tell you, they feel awesome, great material. And you know how much this costs? 10 bucks. 10 bucks compared to the $24 that I paid at Amazon. And I bought several. I got this style, okay? And it came out really cute. And I don't know if you guys watched it when I was in Florida. 
My sister did an unboxing of some of the stuff that she bought from Timo. She got some uh, baby blankets. Came out really, really cute. Good quality. Um, here are some other ones, okay? Because I, because the thing is, I don't know if you guys know. I think I told you guys. I started doing uh, Aqua Zumba, okay? So I, I said, hey, I want to start um, exercising again. So I, I, liked, I like to go swimming and stuff like that. So I did Aqua Zumba. This is another one. Good quality. 10 bucks. 10 bucks, guys. And, you know, I was just like thinking to myself, wait a minute, Amazon, these things were $24.00. And these are good for when I go to my swimming classes, right? Isn't that cute? So I figured instead of using the bath towels that I have here, right, I'll use these towels for my swimming classes. So what I've been doing is I've been buying these and then I just embroider my initials on them and stuff. That way, you know, while I'm swimming, if I keep it on the bench and stuff, nobody will take my stuff, you know. Hopefully, you know, sometimes people take your stuff, even if you have your initials on it. But, um, you know, but yeah, $10. So, yeah, I got Timo, Timo Jill. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I, Iris said, was my mom angry at Melo for using her shoes as a chew toy? No, I mean, he... He grabbed the shoe, but we were always able to get the shoe back from him before he actually started pumping holes in them and everything. And I got to be honest, I don't think my mom was mad. I think my mom actually loved having Mello home and, um, you know, visiting. My dad loves Mello to death also. I, I felt kind of bad because I was kind of hoping that my dad would make it home and that he would be able to see Mello. Um but it didn't happen, so um, but that's okay. Um, you know, we were able to FaceTime with my dad and stuff because he really he enjoys the dog and stuff. But no, um, Abuela spoils Mello like crazy and stuff. Mello does no wrong, okay. If she does any yelling, she, I wish she does it to me, <laughs> she yells at me. <laughs> hey, Lucy Signs, how are you? Um and Robin says, I don't blame you for turning that down. I know you're talking about those silk. I'm telling you, if I cannot, if if I know that I cannot embroider something really nice for a customer, I turn that order down. I just turn it down. I do not take it. You know why? And I'm going to tell you something, and, and I'm serious, guys, about this. When you have an embroidery business, it's very, very important that whatever leaves your shop, it is top notch. Now, some of the time, all the time because that one time that one time that something leaves your shop and it's not top notch they're gonna be talking about you i'm telling you they're gonna be talking about you they they are you know you just don't want that so if you're not sure about working with a particular fabric which is why i don't i will not touch silk i will not touch satin um you know because of that because i know how hard it is because of the puckering and how slippery some, you know, that fabric is. Um, I am telling you, if you don't do a good job, it's, it can really mess up your business. It really, really can and stuff. Um, yeah, so Lois, uh, my boss's daughter wants me to do skulls for her law school graduation. She's in a pinch because she's waited too long. Now I'm, no, Lori, I'm okay. Lori, what I would say to do, all right, is ask, make sure, go to uh, Amazon sells them. Amazon sells them because that's what I did with my girlfriend, all right, because I was nervous about it too. Whatever you do is make sure that it's not a dense design. Make sure that you use sticky stabilizer and make sure that you stitch slow. That's all it is. And have an extra one. Have an extra one on the side just in case you mess up. If you mess up, it's not a big deal. She's still got something that she can walk um, walk the floor on, you know, or the stage or what they call that. They, they say they're going to walk, something like that. I don't know. I haven't walked in so long. I mean, last time what, when I graduated last time with my master's degree. Um, damn, I think I, I got my master's degree in 20, 
2012. 2012. Wow. Almost 10 years, yeah, about 10 years ago. Something like that. Yeah, Cardito was little. Cardito was little when I when I got my master's degree and stuff like that. Yeah. And stuff. But um, yeah, don't don't be scared, Lori. Give you know, and this is the other thing, Lori. Um, don't let fear get in the way. Don't let fear get, you know, just because I say I won't touch it, that doesn't mean you should, you know, because you I mean, don't don't, you know, I've done it before, I have done it before. Okay, it is doable. All right. It's just that you just got to make sure you pick the right design for it. All right. And just take your time. And my whole thing is just have an extra one on the side because if oops happen and oops even happen on stuff that I know inside out. Okay. I still mess up on towels. Okay. Look, so this is today. All right. And I'm an expert. I got to go over on uh, Mellow. Okay. I'm an expert, supposedly, okay, because this is all I do is I do kitchen towels all the time, and I still mess up, okay, because look, I got a hole. This was nesting. This was nesting, and as you can see, look, I had a hole right here. My, uh, my machine ate it up, so there went that one, <laughs> so you, mistakes are going to happen. Mistakes are gonna happen. We're human, okay? And and you know that's that's just life. Crap, you know, crap happens, you know. So don't let um don't let fear stop you from trying stuff. Just don't, because you're not gonna get better that way. Um, but the heat away stabilizer is recommended for silk. There you go. Um, I haven't tried it though. Um, hey y'all, the stabilizer. That stabilizer, I'm picking up eight yards of it tomorrow for $22. There you go. I think she's talking about the easy uh, tearaway one with the perforated ones. Um, hey, Denise, how are you? Hey, Design by Love. Um, how old is Mello? <laughs> is she going to? It's a he, Angela, and Stitches. Uh, Mello's a boy, and he is actually three years old. He is three years old. I got him as a puppy and stuff. And um, yeah, he's a handful. He is a true handful. Um, hey, Terry, how you doing? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I love you guys too. Um, he is. He's always he's always into something and stuff. He's he's our baby. <laughs> um, let's see. See what other questions. Hey Sarah, how are you? Um, oh, she says, uh, she also uh let me see the Kinder Bell ones were too much money for me. I got 25 uh white blank ones on Amazon for six dollars. It's also a good way to know what you don't have when you make one of each of the stabilized help with inventory. Oh, I never, I got to look up uh, Kinder Bell. I never heard of that. Um, printed portion of the, oh, Debbie says she also leaves the, the printed portion of the, the stabilizer inside the, the, the thing. Yeah, I mean, it was actually someone that um, recommended that I do that because, you know, when you buy stabilizer, you just take off that plastic thing. You throw it out. Before you know it, you don't even know what you're looking at. You're like, okay, what is this? What did I buy? You know, so, and you forget the brand and all that kind of stuff. It can really, it can really mess you up, you know? So anyway, um, um, if I'm going to do the same thing over and over again, after I tear off the hoop, just to place a tape of stabilizer over the hoop and I'll do the next one. Yep, Rita, that helps save, exactly. What size, okay, what size needle and thread do you use for small fonts? Again, okay, Rita, when you're doing small fonts, the size needle that you want to do is a 65.9. Oh, Robin's got it. There you go. And the weight of the thread, you want it to be a 60, okay? You don't want to use a 40. Because if you use a 40, the thread's going to be too thick. 
okay? And you don't want to use a needle 7511 because what's going to happen is the holes are going to be too big, all right? So you want a very fine needle, which is the 6911, like Robin has there. And then the thread weight that you want to use is a 60, okay? Um, let's see. Um, everyone should just run Jeanette's videos while around the house and let the ads run so she earns more from YouTube. <laughs> I think my husband does. <laughs> Debbie, I think Fred does that sometimes. <laughs> but thank you, though, for the encouragement. <laughs> hey, Faith, how you doing? Oh, yeah, he's hanging in there, Faith. Dad's hanging in there. Um, And if he doesn't come home soon, I am going to have to make another trip to Florida and stuff to um help out. And everything. Hopefully, um, he'll be fine though. But I am hoping everything works out and stuff. All right. I think I am at the end. I think I am at the end, and I think I have covered everything, guys. Um, wow. Okay, two hours and forty-five minutes. <laughs> but as I always say, I always make sure like the first hour of our embroidery happy hour, I give you guys a 411 of whatever topic it is that we're going to cover that week. That way, the rest of the night, we can just hang out, talk, and I can answer your questions and all that kind of stuff and everything. So, you know, yeah. So right now, as you can see, um, this one right here fell asleep with my shoe, um, as you can see. So and uh my stabilizers is a little messy so i'm gonna have to clean that up and i'm gonna call it the night and stuff because um yeah i want to call my sister see how she's doing because i see she hasn't been on the chat she's probably tired and stuff because she has been um doing a lot of driving back and forth and stuff because my mom lives in homestead she lives in miami um the hospital's in miami and um, it is quite of a distance, I will tell you. Um, you know, we were driving, uh, I was doing a lot of driving. I was, you know, and Miami had a shortage of gasoline, you know, gasoline, which at that moment I was like, oh God, thank goodness I drive an electric car because I was able to get up every morning, go straight to the supercharger, charge up the car, then go, you know, get my mom, um, drive her to the hospital. Then I go back to the house, feed Mello. Then I would pick up Nancy. Then go back to the hospital. Then after the hospital, take Nancy home and then go back home. So um, it was a lot of driving back and forward. Um, and having that electric car really did help and stuff. So it was really exhausting. And it really did kind of like take a toll on me because I was really tired because Driving um, from from Virginia to Florida, it did take me two days because I don't like driving at night. Um, you know, I I just don't like doing that because you know I think I've watched enough horror stories where I'm kind of like I don't want a flat tire in the middle, you know, in I ninety five or anything like that. God forbid something happens. So I usually like you know I'll drive until I see that the sun's gonna stay down. And then I'll stay at a hotel. And um, what's really good is that my husband stays here. And usually what he does is we um, he watches my car and then he knows exactly like where I am. And then like he'll hook up a hotel. And then of course he has to do his research because we got to get a pet friendly hotel because Melo's with me. And um, then in the morning we wake up and then I, I kept going. And when I drove to Florida, I kind of drove through a little storm. So that was very tiring. And I was kind of glad that I had the Tesla because even though it was pouring and stuff, it was really hard for me to see the road, but the car had enough sensors where it was able to, you know, it has a big screen. So I was able to really see the lines of the lane and everything. So I, it, it, it was really good. So yeah, it was hard to get there. And then I have to drive every day all over the place. And then driving back. So when I got here, I was truly like exhausted, exhausted, still really tired and stuff. So I think this weekend, probably what I'm going to do is I'm really going to try to relax and I'll probably get up in the morning and I'll take a swim and stuff and just, um, just relax and sit in the steam room and just, just relax, you know, it takes some time for me, you know, and stuff. And, um, 
Yeah, I still haven't even unpacked. Can you believe that? I've been here all week. And then I started working. And then when I got here, I had orders because I reopened the shop. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and this guy doesn't give me a break. <laughs> but I love him to death. So anyway, guys, anyway, well, Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I really, really appreciate it and stuff. I hope the information that I gave you guys tonight was pretty um, helpful to some of you guys about the stabilizers that I have on hand and how I've used them and stuff like that. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. As always, I'm always available to help if you ever need anything and stuff. And if you have an idea of a video you want me to try to do for you guys, just let me know and stuff. And I will be more than happy to try to, you know, create that video for you and stuff. Cause you know, that way we can all learn from each other and stuff. So guys, I will talk to you guys later. You guys have a great, great weekend. Please stay safe, be healthy and um, make sure that you live each day to the fullest and, you know, um, you know, hug your parents. I'm telling you, hug your parents, tell them you love them and all that kind of stuff and everything and, and your family and your friends, because, you just never know, you know? I mean, life is short and stuff. Make the best of it. Make the best of it every, every day, you know? And stuff. Don't worry about the small stuff. Worry about the big stuff. And have fun sewing and embroidering too. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend and I will see you guys next Friday. And I'll make sure to keep pumping up those videos. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Have a good night.